Counterfeiters will not only copy your product, but they will replicate your packaging and labeling too, including authentication marks, serial numbers, and QR codes in order to avoid detection. This can make it very difficult for brand owners to decipher between legitimate and knockoff products. Verify Me has the answer. Our Rainbow Secure Ink and Veripass tracking solution stops counterfeiters in their tracks while enabling fast inspections and enforcement where it's needed. For more information, visit www.verifyme.com. I'm Craig Curran. I'm president of NOSCO. NOSCO is a printed packaging provider based in Chicago, Illinois. We provide cartons, labels, inserts, and flexible packaging to the pharmaceutical, natural health, personal care, and the healthcare industry. Our first introduction to HP Indigo was really all about uh, providing our customers a short to medium runs more cost effectively. But we really learned that the HP Indigo had a lot more benefits to it. Really the quality of the product and what we're able to obtain uh, day in, day out is unquestionably the best. With Nosco, we've been able to develop a whole security business surrounding the HP Indigo technology. Over the last few years, brand protection and security has really picked up. And I really believe the driver for that is the, the continued globalization of the world, along with the internet where products can be easily diverted and you don't know when you buy something on the internet that it's authentic or not. We utilize HP Indigo technology of variable data printing and invisible ink to help our clients track their products. We can print variable barcodes in an invisible manner our customer can scan them, they can trace them throughout the country, and if they show up in a place they shouldn't show up, our customers can uh, purchase them out of the supply chain and really know where they came from. We believe the future is really fabulous with the growth of the HP Indigo technology. And we've been able to now service over 250 customers every single month using digital printing. We're over 2 billion labels, cartons, and flexible packaging products that we produce on the HP Indigo platform. By implementing all three platforms at NOSCO of digital labels, digital cartons, and digital flex pack, all powered by HP Indigo, we've really been able to grow significantly. Many counterfeits are purchased because it's impossible to differentiate them clearly from the original. This represents a substantial risk for your brand, your customers and your turnover. Be smart and play it safe with ScriptoTrace, the innovative all-in-one solution for product and trademark protection. ScriptoTrace consists of a unique smartphone verification app, market analytics and print layout management, all in one easy to use package. Your product receives a unique by a smartphone anytime and anywhere in the world. Researchers, inspectors or consumers can verify products on your behalf and collect data. Counterfeits and grey market products can be easily identified and located. Data generated by the app is collected and instantly transferred to the Scriptotrace server. It contains valuable information about, for example, the user, time and location of the verification, which you can view, evaluate or export as required. With real-time observations of the market movements of authentic and counterfeit products, your reactions can be targeted to movements and trends. 
The system is web-based and multilingual, allowing you to work anywhere in the world. Secured and protected data exchange guarantees the highest data security and availability. Scriptotrace, end-to-end brand security and analytics. Sounds good? Request a demo at unica.com. Counterfeiters will not only copy your product, but they will replicate your packaging and labeling too, including authentication marks, serial numbers, and QR codes in order to avoid detection. This can make it very difficult for brand owners to decipher between legitimate and knockoff products. Verify Me has the answer. Our Rainbow Secure Ink and Veripass tracking solution stops counterfeiters in their tracks while enabling fast inspections and enforcement where it's needed. For more information, visit www.verifyme.com.
I'm Craig Curran. I'm president of NOSCO. NOSCO is a printed packaging provider based in Chicago, Illinois. We provide cartons, labels, inserts, and flexible packaging to the pharmaceutical, natural health, personal care, and the healthcare industry. Our first introduction to HP Indigo was really all about uh, providing our customers uh, short to medium runs more cost effectively. But we really learned that the HP Indigo had a lot more benefits to it. Really the quality of the product and what we're able to obtain uh, day in, day out is unquestionably the best. Mm -hmm. But NOSCO, we've I'm been able here. to develop a whole security business surrounding okay. the HP Indigo technology. Over the last few years, brand protection and security has really picked up. And I really believe the driver for that is uh, the continued globalization of the world, along with the Internet, where products can be easily diverted and you don't know when you buy something on the Internet that it's authentic or not. We utilize HP Indigo technology of variable data printing and invisible ink to help our clients track their products. We can print variable barcodes in an invisible manner. Our customer can scan them, they can trace them throughout the country, and if they show up in a place they shouldn't show up, our customers can uh, purchase them out of the supply chain and really know where they came from. We believe the future is really fabulous with the growth of the HP Indigo technology. We've been able to now service over 250 customers every single month using digital printing. We're over 2 billion labels, cartons, and flexible packaging products that we produce on the HP Indigo platform. By implementing all three platforms at NOSCO of digital labels, digital cartons, and digital flex pack, all powered by HP Indigo, we've really been able to grow significantly. Many counterfeits are purchased because it's impossible to differentiate them clearly from the original. This represents a substantial risk for your brand, your customers, and your turnover. Be smart and play it safe with ScriptoTrace, the innovative all-in-one solution for product and trademark protection. ScriptoTrace consists of a unique smartphone verification app, market analytics, and print layout management, all in one easy-to-use package. Your product receives a unique and unambiguous identity, which can be verified in no time via smartphone, anytime and anywhere in the world. Researchers, inspectors or consumers can verify products on your behalf and collect data. Counterfeits and grey market products can be easily identified and located. Data generated by the app is collected and instantly transferred to the Scriptotrace server. It contains valuable information about, for example, the user, time and location of the verification, which you can view, evaluate or export as required. With real-time observations of the market movements of authentic and counterfeit products, your reactions can be targeted to movements and trends. The system is web-based and multilingual, allowing you to work anywhere in the world. Secured and protected data exchange guarantees the highest data security and availability. Scriptotrace, end-to-end brand security and analytics. Sounds good? Request a demo at unica.com.
Hello. Good morning, everyone. I'm guessing you can hear me, right? Yeah, we can hear you. Great. So I'll just give it a five more minutes and then we can start. All right, hello everyone. Hope you're all safe and doing well. Uh, we will start now. So uh, as an introduction, the COVID-19 pandemic and subsequent lockdown has built a severe flow to an already stretched global economy. The outbreak has provided counterfeiters with an opportunity to capitalize on consumers' vulnerabilities given the shortage in multiple product categories. This is mainly due to the high demand and disruptions in the supply chain. Uh, as most manufacturing operations have been scaled down or suspended. Uh, the limited availability of products in the market across various sectors is creating a vacuum and makes 
influence intermediaries to capture the market by supplying counterfeit and fake products. Counterfeit goods can be found across nearly all commercial sectors. Counterfeits include and not limited to pharmaceuticals, tobacco, alcohol, automotive parts, consumer goods, electronics, and even toys, just to name a few. The COVID-19 pandemic means that the counterfeits pose a greater threat than ever. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, my name is Hazim Ibrahim, the founder and CEO of Asia Security Group and the organizer of the virtual high security printing and brand protection conference and exhibition. We firstly would like to welcome and thank all the speakers, the sponsors, and participants for taking part in this event. The event will discuss the emerging challenges faced by brand owners and government agencies in combating illicit trade and counterfeiters post the COVID-19 pandemic. With a fantastic speaker lineup of our 20 expert speakers and 14 interactive sessions to be present presented across the two days. So to kick off this event, uh, allow me to go through the event agenda at the start uh, real quick. So uh, we will have a total of five sessions presented today. Uh, the first session will be brand protection during the times of COVID-19. Uh, the transition uh, best practices shifting the focus of protection and surviving the pandemic without compromising to be presented by uh, Luke Manuel from Frontier. Uh, the second topic will be presented by Perry uh, Farley and HP Indigo titled Post COVID 19 Supply Chain Anguity Driven by HP Indigo Digital Print and Perry Farley Anti Counterfeiting Solutions. And then uh, the third session will be titled Compassion the Little Street and Tax Free Zones by After Balloons. And the fourth session will be how the acceleration of digitalization has increased illicit trade and the best practices to fight against it. And uh, finally, the end session will be ensuring brand protection and integrity in times of COVID-19 by Sandra Shikha Jana uh, Asra. And then we will have a 10 to 15 minutes uh, Q&A session and a talking uh, session whereby all the attendees can actually turn on the camera and uh, unmute the mic and we can have an open discussion. Uh, so allow me to first introduce our first uh, session and speaker today, who uh, will be um, Mr. Lob Del Manuel, who is the General Counsel and Vice President for Legal and Corporate Affairs for Frontier, one of the biggest telecommunication technology and ISP company in Southeast Asia. Uh, Lob is in charge of managing the overall legal needs of Frontier in all its international operations in Asia and North America. Uh, and is a part of Frontier's uh, eStaff, the company's overall top leadership team. Uh, before joining Frontier, uh, Loeb was the Chief Compliance Officer, General Counsel, and the Vice President for Legal, Public Policy, and Compliance Office uh, and Government Affairs for Pepsi Philippines. So I think, uh, Loeb, you can uh, unmute and join us on the stage. Thank, thank you. Thank you for that introduction, Nezen. Hi, hello, everyone. You can share your screen now. Let me stop my screen. You can share your screen now. All right, let me do that. Yeah. Okay. Can you see it? Ah, uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, good afternoon, everyone. So, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizing committee of this online forum. You know, I used to attend a lot of forum in a year. In fact, like I have a budget already allotted uh, every time I do my annual budget. Uh, in order to make sure that you know you keep updated on what's happening around the world and make sure that uh, you know exactly um, how to talk to in your counterparts, for example, particularly in Southeast Asia. But this year we are facing a pandemic, right? And even this type of activities has been very limited at the beginning of the year. And we learned to cope, actually, we learned to adjust based on what is important to us. And here we are making things happen. Um, before anything else, you know, every engagement, we are required to talk about our company in the first few slides, but allow me to introduce myself and my company and what we do so that you'll have a more concrete background of what I'm talking about or what is important to me as a speaker. Um, it's very relevant because, you know, uh, I want to focus this first discussion on transitioning practices shifting the focus and surviving the pandemic without compromising, particularly on what's happening here in Myanmar. I've been assigned here um, for about a year now. And uh, let me tell you that, you know, this market is an interesting market. There's so many things that are happening all together. So it's hard to keep up actually with, um, with, with, with what was happening. 
But anyway, Frontier is a very young company. We started actually operation about seven or eight years ago. And um, we have been incorporated in several countries, but the main operation of Myanmar or of Frontier is here in Myanmar. Um, so far, our introduction to the world actually is the same introduction to the world of Myanmar very recently. That was in the 2013 Southeast Asian Games. Uh, we were very involved there and that was a time that we showed what we can do to the region. And from there on, it's unstoppable. Um, we became the largest ISP company in the country uh, as of the moment. In fact, like you may be surprised that the cheapest internet probably in the region is here in Myanmar. We offer about $5 a month of subscription for an unlimited internet in Mandalay, in Yangon, and Bago. And if you're not impressed with $5, sorry, did I say 5,000? Sorry, that's $5 a month. So if you're not impressed with $5 a month of subscription of internet, I don't think you're, you're gonna be impressed with, any, uh, with anything at all. So I, I take pride of being part of that organization that provides this very affordable internet uh, to the community. So as of February 19, third tier is the largest ISP company in Myanmar, and we provide access to affordable and effective communication services in Yangon and Mandalay. Um, we have a lot of technologies that we developed on our own. In fact, like we have registered patents uh, in several jurisdictions, including the US. And um, we have provided this affordable internet for over a couple of years now, and we are the only one in the market. Right now, we have about 2 million subscribers, actually about 365 household subscribers to be exact. And the company has been founded by engineers, by tech people uh, that were based in the US. What's interesting is that most of these genius, these experts, these doctors are actually Myanmar born. And uh, part of the goal in developing or creating Frontier is really to help the country develop, to go back to Myanmar to help the country develop and to help the economy become more vibrant. And as you know, well, I can say now that uh, next to food, internet is the most basic commodity. And I think that has been heightened by the current pandemic. Uh, I couldn't imagine surviving the pandemic without, um, without the internet, right? I mean, even your communication with your family and your profession has been mixed. Uh, all together very conveniently by the internet. And technology keeps us you know, working together, like particularly what we're doing right now, this forum is, um, is an attest, uh, well, it is a testament to the importance of technology in the market and how we do business. So currently we have about 2,400 employees and we have two headquarters. There are two warehouses and 38 stores in Yangon and Mandalay. Um, over 120 workforce are repatriates, or there are Myanmar born who were educated, trained, and really worked outside the country, but decided to go back to participate in, you know, nation building and making sure that uh, the country is at par when it comes to what's happening around the world. Uh, we expect to grow to at least 20,000 employees by 2023. And uh, one of the things that I'm, again, very proud of is the technology industry, the telecom industry, the ISP industry has been hit by the pandemic, just like any others, but it is surviving and it is doing quite well compared to the other industries. Of course, there are many, many challenges uh, along the way, but I think we're doing quite okay in terms of our targets for even 2020 and uh, for the coming years. So. Let me go to my topic after that quick introduction about you know, what we do here in Myanmar. Um, I wanna talk about the brand protection system in Myanmar, which is actually quite interesting. And uh, I want to talk about you know, how we are transitioning to a new system in the middle of the pandemic, because this is quite unique to the country. Uh, it might be interesting to most of you that the old system of protecting your brands in the country is still dating as far back as 1877. To be specific, it's the Specific Relief Act, the Law of Torts of 1855, the Penal Code of 1816, the Civil Procedure Code of 1908, the Registration Act of 1908, and the Deeds Registration Law of 2018. 
To this day, we still follow the system on first to use principle. Uh, you know, I've been uh, an intellectual property and brand protection lawyer for almost all of my career. In fact, one of the things uh, about me is that I started my career in brand protection by working in public policy in the government. And uh, I remember my experience in the World Intellectual Property Organization. We have a lot of partnership with the Philippines uh, that we promote uh, a modern type of intellectual property protection in Southeast Asia. But Myanmar, as you know, the history about the country, it just opened up its doors a couple of years ago. So I think it's understandable that we're still uh, progressing from an old system to a new system. And even up to this date, we're still using the first to use principle, um, which is a good warning for every investor coming into the country or for those who, who doesn't really have to have presence here, but whose products or whose brands are being used or being utilized in, in our market. So how do we protect uh, intellectual property or brands here in Myanmar? There is a declaration of ownership system. A trademark can be registered with the Office of the Registration of Deeds or the Registry Office by filing a declaration of ownership. And it is signed by the applicant with the Registry Office within 120 days from the execution of the, 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 the declaration of ownership. And that's covered by section 17, 22, and 24 of the deeds of the registration law. So you have to declare, you have to claim it uh, from the very beginning. There's no Actually, there's no very formal type of a registration system. It's sort of declaring what you want to protect in the market. It's sort of declaring to the market the brand that you own. And uh, there's even no examination and there's no expiration of what you're claiming. One DTO can cover one trademark, one brand. Uh, interesting also is that it covers several classes, even if it, one, if it, if it covers one trademark. So the, the trademark registration is per trademark, not per class, which is quite different from those who are used, for those who are used to the WIPO system, like, well, Philippines, Singapore, the US, and uh, most of the modern uh, economies. So here, your fees are actually based on your trademark and not on the number of classes that you want to protect. If the declaration of ownership is in English, it has to be notarized in the local language or in Myanmar translation. The Myanmar translation should be notarized. Uh, if the DTO is signed abroad, it must be notarized by a notary public also. And the registry office takes around two weeks to register the, the declaration of ownership. Again, there's no examination. So it's very difficult to, to oppose <laughs> or to, to have a case actually uh, enforcing your brand uh, protection or ownership of something unless you have enough proof that you're actually first to use. So those are the, I, I, I want to emphasize, that those, those are the two most important things that you have to, to remember. The first to uh, use. Me, yes. Uh, could you possibly make the presentation in full screen so everyone can see it? Sure, sure. So in, the slide to, to, in the slide, sure. Sure, just be, yep. Yeah, yeah, is that the one? Is it in full screen now? Can you see it? No, it's it's not now. It's into it's in presentation view. Okay, let me skip that one. So full screen in presentation view. I think in the display settings you can edit that. Okay, this is the one. Now, can you see it or no? Nope, still, it's still. You can change the display settings. Try changing the display settings. Uh, where's the display setting? <laughs> right in the, in the middle between the two options. All right, let me, let me. Okay. You need to click on the display setting from the, uh, from in between. Slideshow, is that the one or what? Slideshow, yes. All right, okay. if someone saying click F5, try clicking F5. F5, control F5. All right, that's nope. not. Then try one. F5 without the control. 
All right. Uh, you need to click on display setting at the top. Oh, this, this one. Yes. Duplicate the slideshow. Uh, so is it presenter view? Yep. Okay, so it's working now? Yep, no, great. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, for all, all right. Sorry. About that guy. A lawyer is not a technology person. Anyway, so let me go through that. Just to summarize, we don't have an examination and there's no expiration period. That's one. So that's, that's one thing that you have to remember when you're coming into to Myanmar. Um, of course, there is a lot of work available for lawyers. That's one thing that I can assure you. And for those who are in the business of brand protection, well, primarily because outside, uh, well, in order to file a declaration of ownership, the applicant outside Myanmar needs to hire a local lawyer here uh, in the market. And um, there should be, if you're appointing someone here, you need to issue also a power of attorney and notarized and legalized by the embassy uh, of Myanmar in the applicant's country. So that's, that's uh, an important aspect that you need to remember. So the minimum requirement uh, is uh, for the applicant to be a Myanmar national or a juridical person. If a foreign applicant is doing the application, you must act through an agent with an address for service inside the country. So the applicant must also execute a declaration of ownership of trademark pursuant to the Registration Act in Section 18. A foreign applicant must execute a special power of attorney in favor of the local agent. It is also customary to, pu to publish a cautionary notice. So a cautionary notice, I'll discuss it with you uh, later on. So the relevant trademark must be used and must be registered in the origin of country if it's coming from another country. Although it is not yet used in Myanmar, you can register it already as long as um, the trademark uh, must be used in where it is coming from. So the power of attorney and the declaration of ownership must be executed and authenticated in the presence of a notary public. Um, again, you know, Myanmar is a special uh, jurisdiction. It's very similar to the Philippines because it maximizes the civil and even the common law uh, tradition in its uh, advantage. Uh, so even the legal practice is actually based on the British system, but there are some influences on a civil law system um, because it's still within Southeast Asia. Um, the power of attorney must be signed by the representative slash officer of the company who signed the declaration of ownership. And after the submission of the declaration of ownership of trademark and the power of attorney, the trademark application will then be registered no examination needed. After the registration, that's the only time that the cautionary notice will be published. So the cautionary notice is such an announce, it's similar to an announcement to the rest of the world, the public notice. You tell everyone in a newspaper that you own the brand. So once a CN can cover one trade, one CN can cover one trademark for a number of classes or a number of trademarks of the same owner of the same class of goods or services. So when I first came here um, in the country, one of my adjustments is actually on this type of an evidence. So your actual publication can sometimes hold as a proof also of use, uh, of use and the coverage of what you're claiming for the rest of the world. So a cautionary notice is like you know, a claim that this has to be protected and I own that. No registration and again, no publication needed. The publication is only after the registration. So no need to renew also, that's quite interesting. So there's no renewal of trademark and it's not a compulsory system, but of course, but of course the lawyers find ways in order to make it more interesting. So we advise them to renew the whole process in a period of three or five years. That's again, taking into consideration that you know, people forget and the cautionary notice will allow you to refresh the public of what you are claiming to be protected. So yeah, so the important note is that all documents at the time of application must have at least three year valid, three months validity period. So that means that from the issue ones, the validity is actually from the issue ones. You cannot use any old document. It has to be freshly issued. It must be within a three months old uh, type of a document. So what 
are the measures of brand protection that we always see in the market, in this, in this market. The first one is if it's a trademark, uh, then you can have a civil action. If a trademark is registered or used without authorization of its owner, the trademark owner can file a civil action. So the civil action can be an injunction or an order against an unauthorized use. There can also be a cancellation of the registration of the previous one that came after your registration or your use for this matter. And a claim for compensation for any of the damages that you suffered uh, from in the infringing activities, very specific to the specific relief act, the law and torts, the civil code and all of that. So you have to be creative. There's no one central law that you can use in order to protect your brand. It has to be a combination of those old laws that are still valid up to this point. Um, the criminal actions are also available. So you use criminal action by filing uh, you know, a case, a, civil, a criminal case against the infringer. And those actions can be done or those type of actions are in three different modes. The first one is when someone is using your falsified or counterfeit trademark or when someone is falsifying your trademark or counterfeiting your trademark or when someone makes or possess any instrument for making the counterfeit trademark even if there's no actual uh, usage yet and the sales of goods bearing the counterfeit trademark. The court can impose an infringer on the infringer a fine and an imprisonment term and an order for seizure and destruction of the infringing goods. So protecting the brands, there's also another one that you can use, which is very common for IP <laughs> or brand lawyers, and that's a cease and desist letter. It's also quite uh, common here in the country. Before filing a court case, it is a practice to send the cease and desist letter to the infringer and their authorized directors. Um, if the infringer is accompanied by registered posts, to their registered address, which can be obtained by a company, search on the website of the Directorate of Investment and Company Administration, or we call it DICA here. The said company search and market search for evidence of infringing activities are necessary for the CDL and the services of the court summons and the administrative actions. So very similar to when you're claiming uh, small claims for liabilities. The CDL should contain demands for the infringer to cease the infringing activities, withdraw the infringing trademark from the market, and sign an undertaking letter to undertake that they will comply uh, with a cease and desist demand. So what is happening right now? So before filing a court, you must remember um, that a public warning should be published also. There should be a public warning. A public warning may be published in a local newspaper to warn the public of the infringing products and to warn the infringer of potential legal actions if the infringer does not cease the infringing activities. Um, the public warning should be published in both English and in Myanmar language uh, in a nationwide of, or, or news, in a newspaper of nationwide distribute, distribution. Uh, the other thing that you must remember is that there's no reliable database uh, here in Myanmar. If you check out the WIPO brand um, database, you can actually do a search in the WIPO website and you will see a list uh, in Southeast Asia. So the last country that has not been listed there is uh, Myanmar. And uh, fortunately, this will change in a couple of months because we're working on that. Uh, we're transitioning into a new system that allows us to create a database um, that is at par with uh, the rest of the database around the, uh, the region. So the changing times are actually uh, the more interesting part of this topic. Uh, well, aside from the photos that I'm always showing, you know, we've been uh, quite constrained in terms of traveling. So I hope uh, I, I can show you what the country is through these slides. So, but anyway, going back to our topic, on August 28, 2020, the Ministry of Commerce issued an order for filing of application of trademarks under the new law. This order applies to existing trademark owners. Um, the existing trademark owners include both trademark owners that have registered their marks under the Office of the Registration of Deeds, as well as owners of trademark, which though not registered, remain in use throughout the country. This order actually paves way to a transition from the first to use system to the first to file system. 
but actually let me warn you that the first to file system is not yet in force. So we are still in the transition or the soft opening period. We are allowing the registration of the marks. We are transitioning the old marks that were already registered to be transferred under the new system. So the Myanmar new electronic trademark registration was launched uh, in October, 2020. So this is actually delayed. We were expecting this to happen as early as February this year. Uh, the Myanmar Ministry of Commerce announced that the online trademark application under the new electronic system will start on the 1st of October. And it's actually quite, it's doing quite well at this point. This new announcement was made as early as February um, by way of an order number 63, 2020. So again, it allows the old system to be transferred to the new system. Uh, they, the, the problem is how about, you know, how, how you protect your new brands that is not yet covered uh, by any type of registration or has not been used uh, in the country. The new system is only applicable again to the currently registered trademarks and those that are being used. For those trademarks or brands that you're still developing and want to get a protection, you still need to go through the old system. So the old system has not yet been totally repealed. So what are the key features of the new system that we're transitioning at this point? Number one is that there will be a public search, finally. And the registration term is already 10 years. It's no longer indefinite. And there's a renewal period of 10 years, after 10 years, and a procedure for recording any type of change uh, in case uh, of any in the future. As anticipated, of course, the system accommodates a transition period. And again, I'd like to emphasize that there are two uh, type of brand that you can transition under this new system. Those that has been previously registered under a declaration of ownership and those that are actually used in the country. Priority rights for existing use only. Existing owners may obtain priority rights over the trademark and off for an online filing starting October 20. According to the order, the date on which the application is accepted will be considered the official filing date of the trademark. Existing owners will enjoy priority rights from this point onward. So this was the original um, announcement of the ministry, but this actually has been changed uh, over a couple of weeks ago. Well, just a couple of weeks ago because of you know, an uproar from, from, from the lawyers who are uh, making sure that the transition is as smooth as possible. So what has been agreed at this point is that, you know, during the soap opening period, which is October 1 until March of 2021, you are allowed to transition everything that you have. And everyone in the market will uh, have the same filing date. Uh, everyone who filed in the soap opening period will be considered to file it on a similar date. Uh, that date, I think uh, we have not yet uh, agreed on, but it should be between also anytime between the opening or the soft opening period of October 1 to March. So the priority rights for the re-registration process, the trademark owner must specify the exact list of goods or services for which mark is used in the application. The re-registration may not be used to expand the type of goods or services covered by a particular mark. The class of goods or services under which the mark is registered must be detailed as for the NIS classification. So that's another development here. NIS classification has been introduced, although you know the country has already been using somehow the NIS classification, but officially it is the new system that will prevail. The official application fees, uh, filing fees, and the payment of the methods of such fees shall be declared before the enforcement of the new trademark law. Okay, so how do you transition? The scanned copies of the declaration of ownership will be sufficient for this re-registration process. All the originals may be subsequently re requested by the trademark examiner for further review. Proof of the use of mark in Myanmar can be shown by submitting a copy of the publication of a cautionary notice. Uh, so you could imagine the, how, how our files look here in Myanmar. Uh, it's a lot of newspaper clippings and all of that, very interesting. Uh, so our advertisement or promotional materials, tax documents are also considered to be a proof of use, very similar to countries that require a proof of use in case of uh, a trademark registration or for those who are renewing uh, their trademark. So in the absence of any official instruction, 
we do not expect the Office of the Registration of Deeds and the Assurance says to continue to accept application for registration of declaration of ownership. However, this may uh, this policy may change as we move towards uh, October 1 starting date of the new electronic system. The trademark owners whose marks have yet to be filed and registered in Myanmar, in Myanmar should take note of this timeline and consider an appropriate transition strategy. So how to prove your previous ownership? So in addition to those documents that we've mentioned, a proof of ownership uh, has been uh, considered. Um, there is a list that was published uh, here in order to prove your ownership. A copy of the trademark file, which I mentioned earlier, a certified true copy of the registration of the issued ORD, an evidence of cautionary notice featured in the newspaper of any medium, a proof of use of the mark in the country, a proof of advertising, a tax receipt, a proof of transfer of ownership, and other documentary evidence. So yes, this is the schedule, as I've been mentioning. The soft opening for the transition is from October 1 to March 31. And the grand opening will be on April 1, 2021. So it's a transition from the old system. If you could imagine there's an old law, an old system, then we published a new law. The new law has a transition, or a, middle, uh, a, a middle period where uh, the new and the old are actually mixing. After the grand opening, we expect the new trademark law uh, to be in full force. This is the same thing also with the patent law. And which is, which is the same thing also in the copyright law. So very exciting times for Myanmar. The, the, the big aspect of intellectual, intellectual property are just currently being developed and during the time of COVID. So the major changes, I just wanted to summarize before we end, a classification, a classic application process. We're gonna have a classic application process under the new system. The new definition of mark has been introduced. A mark will include trademarks, service marks, collective marks, certification marks, 3D marks, geographical indication, well-known marks and trade names will also be granted protection under the new system. The priority claim, the trademark owners will be able to claim priority from any application or registration filed in the Paris Convention country within a period of six months from the first filing. A first to file system, uh, which is a ship from the first to use system, a 10 year validity, a cancellation and an invalidation, a trademark registration can be canceled for non use or invalidated for non registrability by third parties, which is not an option actually in the current system. And of course, the language documents can be submitted in either English or in the Myanmar language. So what has been the impact of COVID in all of these things? That are happening. And surprisingly, the loss, the, the implementation of the law will likely be affected by the COVID pandemic. Uh, we, we've been trying to not be affected by it. Actually, it's been uh, delayed for a few months, but actually, it's still happening as we expected. You know, the delays are there. Even without the pandemic, <laughs> I think in a lot of government policies, the delays are going to happen. So if you ask uh, any lawyer here in Myanmar, we're going to say that. Oh, it's happening as expected. And even though there is a pandemic, of course, there will be some adjustment. Things are expect, oh, well, surprisingly doing well. Um, nevertheless, the government has officially formed already the Central Committee under the Trademark Law as early as March 6, 2020, with the relevant notification appearing to set, marking an important development on the implementation of the law. Since the law passage in 2019, the Ministry of Commerce uh, has been tasked also to administer all IP laws in Myanmar. They've organized several workshops and we've been changing and you know, um, fine tuning how the implementation should work. The new law is expected of course to overhaul what we have been used to in the market. So a lot of adjustment and a lot of changes are expected to, to be delayed uh, and discussed before it is implemented. But what is certain is that it's going to be very similar to the regime around the region, very similar to what you see in Singapore, in Malaysia, in the Philippines, in Thailand. So we're, we're going to be part of the database of the World Intellectual Property Organization, finally, and uh, that we're going to also follow the international uh, direction on misclassification, on um, first to file use, and all of those international 
concepts or principles that should have been second nature uh, in any IP system uh, around the world. So how do you how do you prepare for this one? So this is the recommendation that I have. So number one is that you need to review your portfolio to, it, to identify existing protection gaps and to determine the trademarks to be refiled under the new system. Urgently, you need to file an application for important marks that have not yet been recorded if you have not recorded it. So as I mentioned earlier, those that are registered already are going to be prioritized under the new system to be transitioned. And those that are being used are also going to enjoy the same type of benefit. So right now, make sure that you have proof that uh, you have a registration or at least that you have used it in the market. Uh, the IP office begins operations. So locate the existing copies of the declaration of ownership recorded in the ORD, as well as the cautionary notices previously published in the local newspaper to, 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 support, to support the refiling process. Uh, collect clear and dated evidence of existing use of trademarks in Myanmar, including advertisements, invoices, catalogs, office stationaries, to enable, to enable the utility of the new IP office soft opening period, particularly if no existing recordation of the ORD is available. And then you audit the current trademark licensing arrangements in Myanmar if you're a multinational. Um, maintain existing trademark registration at the ORD. As I've said, we're not repealing the old law just yet. It's still there. It will still be there uh, until we are able to fully transition to the new one. Uh, what I discovered here is that we can postpone actually the actual implementation, the full scale uh, implementation of whatever system that we are implementing. And that's pretty flexible in this country. So just make sure that you don't just let go of those uh, rights based on the previous laws that you got those protection. So yeah, basically that's it. If you have any question, I'll, I'm, I'm here and I'll try to answer it. Thank you a lot for the informative presentation. I'm sure we all have learned a lot in terms of Myanmar trademark law. <laughs> <laughs> and we, uh, we did enjoy the pictures. I think my, once COVID is over, the first flight I'm taking to my mark. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, thank you very, thank you very much, Hassan. So it's it's quite interesting that you know Myanmar is transitioning in the middle of the COVID system, right? And in the middle of transitioning in the COVID system, trademark owners, brand owners, have to protect what they have right now under the new under the old system. And then think about protecting it under the new system. And in the middle of it, how to transition it is a new or it's a different type of regime. Yep, definitely. Thank you a lot for your presentation. It was very insightful. Thank you. All right. I think I can uh, share my screen back again. Sure. All right. So we will take the questions in the Q&A session in the end. So I think we can move to uh, topic two since uh, it's almost time now. So uh, uh, let me allow, allow me to introduce uh, the speakers for the next topic uh, titled Post COVID 19 Supply Chain Inquity Driven by HP Indigo Digital Print and Verify Me Anti Counterfeiting Solution. So our speakers for today are Paul Vitali, who is the Vice President of Business Development for Verify Me, an experienced international business development professional with a driven entrepreneurial attitude towards business growth, having worked with startups, SMEs, large corporates, and government agencies for over 25 years. Uh, thanks all for joining us today. Good job. Paul, are you here? Hello, Paul. I think Paul has some internet. Yep, I'm here now. Hazim, apologies yeah, for that. Paul. No thank worries. You. Uh, well, thank you. And then uh, Yoav Lotan, who is HP Indigo Labels Business Manager for the Asia Pacific region. Uh, he's been leading the Labels product marketing team for HP Indigo for six years at HP Indigo HQ in Israel before relocating over three years ago to Singapore to cover the labels and brand protection segments in Asia. Uh, so thank you, Yoav, for joining us today. Okay, good afternoon for everybody. 
And finally, Dennis Chu, who is the uh, HP Regional Solution Architect supporting Asia Pacific region on labels and packaging printing industry sector. So Dennis has more than 20 years uh, of experience in print industry and previously he also supported many brands owner on the end-to-end -end supply chain and project man management requirements. So I think uh, you are, the stage is yours, please. I will stop sharing my screen. Today more than ever, brands that create high-demand products, such as cosmetics and pharmaceuticals, need protection against counterfeiters who try to copy their packaging and damage their good name. Formulated for printing on HP Indigo, the Rainbow Secure Brand Protection Solution provides the highest level of anti-counterfeiting authentication utilizing invisible images, barcodes, serial numbers, or any other designs that a brand can dream up for their labels and packaging. HP Indigo operators use Rainbow Secure in standard HP Indigo ink canisters, so it's easily integrated and printed onto labels or packaging. The ink is invisible until paired with the all-new Veripass mobile authenticator linked wirelessly to any Android or iOS smartphone. This makes it quick and easy for brand representatives or inspectors to conduct on-the-spot product inspections with instantaneous authentication in the field, including warehouse and distributor audits, brand protection investigations, and customs border and port inspections. Because Rainbow Secure is invisible to the naked eye, even the most sophisticated counterfeiters can't find, copy, or remove the authentication marks, like tracking codes or serial numbers. Plus, it can be used on its own or in combination with visible codes or numbers that are simultaneously printed with normal HP Indigo inks. The Rainbow Secure Invisible Marking Solution can also be paired with Veripass Track and Trace cloud-based software system to see anywhere in the world that product packaging is checked and verified. Hello, everybody. I hope that you can uh, hear me well and uh, see me as well. Hi, Yoav. Good morning. Hi, Paul. Good morning, everybody. Um, uh, my name is Yoav Lotan. Thank you, Hazam, for the introduction. And we are very excited, extremely excited uh, to be here together. I'm here joined uh, together with Paul. Um, Paul, can you tell us where you are? Sure. I'm in a place called Zug, which is about 30 kilometers south of Zurich in Switzerland. I've been based out here for about almost five years now. Oh gosh, time flies. Um, so yeah, really enjoying the, the hills and the mountains and the, yeah. and the fresh air. It's a nice place to live. I think you did the right selection. You know, the, talking about security and, and being in, in Switzerland, I think it, it's a great match together. <laughs> It is, yeah. You, you, you've certainly got to do what you're told here, that's for sure. <laughs> exactly. Um, so um, I'm here in Singapore. I'm part of the HP team uh, taking care of uh, Asia. And I'm also joined here uh, with Dennis Chu from our team in uh, Australia. He's in Melbourne and he will join us uh, later on. So we are very excited um, to come to this uh, joint session together here with Verify Me uh, after hearing the previous session and talking more from the technology side, that's what we are here uh, to do together with you. Um, so Paul, today we prepared something very exciting for the team, right? Yes, that's right. Um, we're going um, we're gonna to move around a bit between the two of us. Um, we've got some, some nice informa information to share and a couple of other videos to share as well. And um, I think we've got the floor for almost an hour. So uh, we, we've got, got to make it entertaining. Cool. Uh, yes, we will we'll make it dynamic. Please also feel free to use the chat uh, in order to raise the question. We'll try to take them along the way and also maybe at the end. Uh, we have a lot to cover today. We have many different locations to take you to and demonstrate the different solutions. Uh, it's all about collaboration and it's all about layered security. This is exactly what we will be uh, addressing uh, with you today. Um, one point uh, to remind to participants, if you have your handphone with you, please make them available because soon we're gonna do some interaction together. Great, I see that you have it, Hazam. So great start for the day. So I think that with that, Paul, maybe we can start 
with a brief introduction uh, to uh, the solution, <clears throat> to the solution uh, that uh, Verify Me is offering in general, and also maybe you can start also speaking a little bit about what we have done in terms of code development together for brand protection and, and security environments. Of course, yeah. Um... Um, my, my role really is to develop those, uh, those partnerships for Verify Me across the globe. And the relationship that we have with HP is very important. The way we've been able to develop the Rainbow Secure uh, uh, inks for, to work on the HP Indigo presses has really revolutionized the way that we, we work. And I'll be able to go into a little bit of that uh, now. If, uh, is, do you want me to take the floor and share my screen, you have? Would that help? I believe we are ready to start, go ahead. Okay. If I move into presentation mode, could everybody see this screen? Maybe just a thumbs up on the screen if people can yeah. see okay. Great. Okay, good. A little bit of background on, on our company, Verify Me. We've been uh, around since about two, to, uh, 2007, we're based out of Rochester, New York in the, in the United States. Uh, we have a European headquarters here in Zug in Switzerland uh, from earlier this year. And in the middle of the COVID uh, pandemic, we were able to actually get an uplisting onto NASDAQ stock exchange. So very financially uh, stable, and that has enabled us to work this uh, expansion program in for, uh, that's really my role to extend those, extend those partnerships across the EMEA and APGA regions. Um, we currently do have partners in the UK and in India, uh, UAE, Africa and China. And obviously we work with HP Indigo on a global, a global scale. Um, our customers re are really would tend to be consumer goods manufacturers or, or nutraceutical companies food and beverages companies, uh, and we work on, again across uh, internationally with those companies. And our products are, it's an integrated track and trace and consumer engagement solution that we call Veripass, and we manufacture secure covert machine readable inks, and they are known as Rainbow Secure. Um, you know, if we class ourselves as a, a brand protection and customer engagement experts, really, it's not just one solution fits, it's about working uh, dynamically with PSPs and print converters and brands uh, to work out what they need and to come up with a suitable solution. Because we has, as you have mentioned, we do talk about this kind of tiered and layered approach, a, a phased approach to brand protection. But these, you know, these current times that we live in at the moment are very unique, you know, consumers, they are concerned about what they put into their bodies and put on their bodies. And that really is the, the envelope within we, which we work. You know, if, you, if you're putting it on your body or you're ingesting it, we want to make sure that, it's, that it, it, it's authentic, it's a genuine product, that we know what the ingredients are, we've got some traceability, and it gives consumers the confidence. And that's how we want to, that's the kind of services we want to be offering to, uh, not only to the print service providers, but also to the end users and the, and the brands themselves. So... How do we go through this kind of phased approach? Um, our, within our first phase, you know, you've got over technology, QR code, serialization, and that kind of ticks the box for track and trace, authentication, and consumer engagement. And then we can use embedded inks, the rainbow secure inks within labels and packaging can be done traditionally pressed using uh, traditional presses and authenticated using a very past checker. And we, we're gonna show you that, that device a little later. We then move into the really the, the, the cream of what we offer, which is the, these covert uh, technologies using the Rainbow Secure inks plus the serialization where you've got intelligence in those invisible codes and serialization numbers. And that's, that's really used for authentication, prevention of diversion, and allows inspectors out there in the field to uh, track, trace, verify, and stop diversion for the brands and we have those uh, inspectors working out there in different countries uh, where there are diversion problems. We do have an online uh, facility called Verify Web, which is a monitor and enforcement uh, solution for online activity, but we, we won't be talking about that uh, uh, today. So this phase one approach, uh, we, this is the use of overt 
visible, unique codes, often obviously laid down with digital press. So you've got that, that uniqueness, that variability on the codes, on the whether they're QR codes or serialization numbers. <laughs> and this is even suitable for using, uh, using this technology with tamper evident labels. We do quite a lot with tamper evident labels where the, the packaging might be existing, but we add the tamper evident label with a, a label printed on HP Indigo with uh, unique serialization codes, even with, with invisible codes as well, to really give a, an extra degree of uh, authenticity and, and, and protection for the brand on that particular product. Now with those codes comes a lot of intelligence. Um, you've got rich business intelligence and analytics with the codes, with the backend database and the dashboard that I'm gonna show you shortly. You've got a situational awareness and reporting of what's happening with your products and a, a com comprehensive supply chain mapping of ability. So whether you're aggregating products from the, from the package to the box, to the crate, to the, to the, to the, to the, uh, to the container, all those codes are locked down along that pathway. And as long as products are, are scanned back in at the uh, distribution level and then the retail level, you've got a full track and trace uh, supply chain visibility all the way through to the end user. And that's very important. What I'd like to do, just take 20 seconds at this stage, if I could ask everybody that can see this screen to take their mobile phones because this is where we're just going to touch very briefly on the customer engagement piece. So if you could scan using your QR codes, you could scan that code at the top. You should then enter a, a, a screen with a link. If you click the link, it will then take you through to uh, the uh, verification button, the purple button that you see on the screen there. Press confirm on your mobile phone. And you will then be into uh, what we would class as the real customer engagement profile, all done to the, down to the mobile phone. And this can, you know, with any mobile devo device, you're gonna be able to receive product related information. The brand could put in there some customer feedback questions, uh, maybe where to buy the next product. It could have user instructions, certificate, certificates of analysis, maybe information about, uh, it could have video, sorry, it could, you could have surveys, you could link it through to a loyalty scheme and a discount scheme. So it's a very powerful tool. And that is using the same code that we use to track and trace the product for the brand and for the manufacturer. It's the same code that then you use for customer engagement. And what I've done here is really just a, a very quick case study with a, a small company based out of the West Coast of, uh, of the US. And I just, just looked at their, their back end the other day and they got, got 9,000 codes. I just uh, I ringed it there with the red marker. Uh, 9,000 codes for a, a small company and they, they, they can see and track where those customer engagement pieces are. Now imagine the power, how powerful that is if the spend on their particular product is ranging upwards towards about $100 per month if you've only just got 9,000 customers that you're now engaging with to encourage them to buy more of your product or maybe a different product line within your brand, it's a heck of an engagement and a heck of an opportunity that you've, you've got based just on those 9,000 people that you're looking at a potential revenue of over 10 million that you could work with by engaging with those customers. So that's really important and we're doing a lot of this within our brand protection portfolio now. And I wanted to just uh, flag this slide up as where you've got authentication problems where a code is scanned in the wrong region or the wrong area, this is where it would flag up. We're, we've got here our demonstration codes, as you can see, being scanned all over the world. And uh, I think if you looked at that, uh, as a, as a means of diversion, I think you could appreciate there's some diversion going on there and you'd be able to lock down those codes and do something about it. So it's very, uh, it's all tracked in real time and very easy to, to work with those codes and that customer engagement piece in the track and trace. So now we add Rainbow Secure into the whole portfolio. It's covert Secure Ink using a specialist pigment. 
It's got a highly controlled supply chain and a light fastness of over 20 years. So there's no fluorescence degradation with time. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very highly specifically made pigment and ink that we create working with it with HP Indigo. Now, if you could imagine adding a static IR mark of a rainbow secure static mark into those within the packaging or labeling with the overt code, you'd absolutely be combating counterfeit because you'd be able to use one of our authenticators, our, our checkers, and we'll show you that shortly, to just beep check to make sure that that is actually your product. And that's a really, that's our phase two line of customer, uh, of, of brand protection, if you like. And then, as I say, the, the phase three is our, the creme de la creme, if you like. It's where we use, um, and this is a, this, where the special relationship is in place with, with, with Indigo. Um, we're laying down highly secure covert variable marks in a single pass. Um, and then we're using the authenticators, again, that will be demonstrated shortly, to verify and track and analyze that data, that intelligent data that's hidden with the IR mark on the label and packaging. And that patented solution is unique in the industry, the way that we, the way that we do that with HP Indigo. I quickly just wanted to show you uh, this snapshot of how the canister is integrated, usually into station seven on the HP Indigo. So if there's any PSPs that are uh, ready to kind of ask that question and want to know how it's integrated, there we go. Uh, it, it forms a, a seamless uh, integration on the 6,000 and 7,000 printers. Um, very easy to, uh, to work within, to, within your, your working uh, printing um, environment. And what I wanted to do quickly before handing back to Yoav is I should be able to click on this link and I'm hoping that again, could I have a thumbs up just to make sure that um, you're now seeing my web browser? Is that correct? Has it, has it? No, we still see uh, all the slides. Uh, I think you need to reshare your screen but, and not yeah. share the presentation file, but the PC screen yeah. itself. So I'll stop share and then share again. Just bear with me one second. Okay, so we should be seeing that. Yep. Yeah, great. I just log in. No, thanks there. So as a brand owner, this is what we'd see from our scans. We'd have our widget activity here, but if we just took a quick look at the real time activity, Great, we've, we've, we can see we've had 40, 46 uh, people that have made, that, uh, have made those scans this morning. I think we've got about 100 on the call. So that's really interesting information. And if I look down the data here, obviously we're tracking in real time. We're getting them from Nigeria, France, Malaysia, Hungary, Peru, and Singapore. So a really powerful backend track and trace and customer engagement piece, linking through with the Rainbow Secure covert uh, marks and codes gives a, a very high degree of brand protection uh, and customer engagement. So that's it for me for the moment. I'm going to stop sharing there and hand you back to Yoav. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. That was a very comprehensive overview, though brief, but very comprehensive of the solution. And uh, I'd like to introduce you all uh, to Dennis, my colleague, our solution architects for labels and packaging. Dennis, hello. Can you hear us? Hi, you are. How are you? Uh, we're good. We're good. We are happy Hi, that Dennis, you can join morning. us. It's a good evening to you, right, yes. in Melbourne? Yes, beautiful. Today is a very sunny day. So we have a question here um, to the audience. Maybe you can walk us through how this works. Yeah, so uh, we have a uh, first questions uh, that uh, we're gonna ask the audience. So please uh, use a mobile phone or you can go to Menti. Uh, if you use a mobile phone, just scan the QR code on the left here. Uh, once you scan, you get into the questions. And uh, the question is, uh, how much do you think it costs to create a label with verified me security element? 
um, the ans there is three answer there. Uh, so much more than the normal labor, little more than normal labor, or little negligible if uh, considered the loss of brand revenue and reputation and more. So if you can, um, yeah, uh, log into Menti uh, and have a quick uh, click on the answer. Uh, we will be able to understand more and then we will let you know uh, what is the real uh, story behind. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dennis. So please uh, use your phone. You can scan this. It will take you directly uh, to, the, um, to the quiz, to the questionnaire. Uh, we'd like to hear from you. We'd like to hear from you. What do you think about uh, the added value, the elements that are important to the brand when it comes down to a uh, layered security, similar to the one that we have just seen together with Verify Me. So I hope that we can get some um, statistics by now. I saw that before we have a very nice engagement of all, over 40 people that already scanned. That's great. So I see that those phones are working nicely. Dennis, what do we see on the stats? Yeah, so you can see my screen. Uh, we have a, a lot of people is um, choosing the la the third one, which is little or negligible. If you if we consider the loss of brand revenue, reputation, and more, uh, I think it's uh, really uh, obvious that um, adding a security element uh, at the very first phase when brand has about uh, how much it costs, it will be very scary. But eventually, if you really do the math uh, and to make sure that uh, what is the real uh, loss that the brand is facing today, probably uh, the third, the third uh, answer will be the right one. Uh, Paul, what do you think? Yeah, I think um, there is maybe a, a misconception that it, it's very expensive. I mean, the ink, the pigment, it, it, it costs to manufacture, it costs to create the ink, um, and it might be, it will be uh, more expensive than just a traditional label. But once you work out, you know, we're, we're working with a, a couple of the larger food and beverage uh, brands at the moment where they're looking at anything from a five to 8% uh, problem with counterfeit. And it's a multi, multi million pound business. It's costing millions each year. So the addition of, a, of protected inks and covert marks and a digital print is, is really a cost effective way of minimizing that. And if we can reduce that, that counterfeit, even we might not correct 100% of it, but if we can reduce that by maybe 50%, then the savings are extraordinary. That's amazing. You off? Yes, thank you. So I hope that you can hear me. Yes. Yes. Right. Um, sure. So we're going to go uh, and, and speak a little bit about um, the, the technology. In perspective, we spoke about the, the elements of Verify Me. Let's speak a little bit about the HP Indigo Secure. So in order to kick this one off, let me share again my screen. Um, and we'll start uh, right away. Don't forget to stop your video as well. Uh, yes. You're off. Yeah. Just a second. Sorry for the short delay. Okay. As you turn the page of today and face the infinite demands of tomorrow, how will you distinguish your product? expand your enterprise, and forge your own path in the landscape of print. One thing is certain, the pages of tomorrow will be printed by HP Indigo Technology. It all starts with one micron of unlimited potential. These encapsulated pigment particles form HP Indigo Electro Inks. Their unique structure makes them pigment agnostic, enabling you to print with the largest variety of colors and spot inks digital printing has ever seen. When you press print, a laser array composes your image as an invisible electrostatic field on the photo imaging plate. 
This operation provides a roadmap for the electrically charged inks and has been scientifically engineered for razor sharp accuracy, allowing each particle to be attracted to where it belongs and away from where it doesn't. The precisely placed ink is then transferred in direct contact onto a heated blanket, which melts the pigment carrying particles into a smooth film. With every color separation, this thermal offset process is repeated, laying down a perfect tapestry of electro ink until your image is fully developed. The blanket then applies this single layer of film to your media in one piece, already dry and custom tailored to match every contour on the surface of your substrate, from coated paper to metallized to canvas. Because the electro inks have been transferred in direct contact at every step, the result is unmatched and coverage and substrate have virtually no effect on quality, even at the highest speeds. This state-of-the-art print engine is built on the remarkably robust backwards-compatible infrastructure found in every HP Go Press, offering you genuine digital flexibility capable of outputting thousands of jobs per day and propelling you into Industry 4.0 by providing real-time data analysis and optimizing press performance through HP Print OS, a cloud-based platform that simplifies and automates production. And you can put your mind at ease, knowing that all HP Indigo presses are engineered with the environment in mind to reduce waste, provide safe inks, and minimize your energy consumption. HP Indigo technology carries you into the next chapter of digital printing. The profits of tomorrow will be printed by HP Indigo technology. So in general, um, digital printing, uh, and this is the essence of what we do here at uh, HP Indigo, but let's look specifically on um, what does it mean for us as a segment, as a specific focus when it comes down to HP Indigo Secure, which Verify Me is part of the overall solution. Um, Dennis, can you share with us a little bit about that? Uh, yes. Thank you. Thanks, Joaf. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Dennis. Uh, I'm the solution architect for uh, HP. So let me share with you today about HP Indigo Secure. So first, we, let us have a look at the market spend on security and brand protections uh, by verticals and solutions. Yeah? On, on the left-hand side, you'll see we have uh, four um, segments uh, on security printing. So we look at uh, personal IDs. Uh, we look at stamps, uh, which is a tax stamp for regulation requirement on, uh, from government. Uh, we also have payment cards and ticketing. Uh, so it's, it's a very big uh, market, uh, and you can see that it's increasing uh, every year, and we're looking into uh, 2022. Uh, on the right-hand side, you see on the brand protection side, where we are foreseeing about 3.6 billion improve, uh, increment uh, on this our spend, uh, spend on uh, can be technology, uh, can be brand protection requirement, and everything will mount up to about 3.6 billion. So it's the market uh, is very intense in here. So if we look into the vertical uh, market that is affected by counterfeits, there is a, a lot of them, but I only listed probably seven that is pretty much the, the main one. Uh, we look at uh, nutraceuticals. Uh, we also have uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, personal care, automotive, uh, and all this. And from here, uh, you will find there's a, a lot of uh, counterfeiting problem in the world that is causing uh, people uh, death and all that. Uh, so you can see uh, even uh, agrochemicals uh, that is causing the crops that is not able to grow. Uh, and uh, in the China, there's uh, also a lot of counterfeit on uh, the Australian products, uh, on uh, nutraceutical products. Uh, and Colgate in US is uh, uh, having uh, special chemicals added in, into the content. And, and this is all causing uh, very big problems, not only for brand, but it's also for the consumer. So what HP have done is that we come up with a HP Indigo Secure team uh, in Israel. Uh, they um, major or focus on how to develop a uh, solution for, for anti-counterfeiting. Uh, in order to do that, first, we need to understand uh, the four layer of security layers. Uh, and of course, in, in general, most of the people knows about three layers, but we, we added four here. But uh, let me explain what is this four layer. So the very first layer is for consumer to be able to see it. Uh, we call it the overt marks. Uh, and this is probably maybe a QR code uh, can be used for brand protection requirement. Uh, Semi-covert is more like a micro tax. It is very small um, hidden uh, security features in your packaging or in your uh, security documents, but you, you cannot see it uh, without a 
fine grass. That's why we call it a, a semi-covert, but you still can see it somehow. Yeah, some, some people with very good vision, they can probably see them. Uh, and if you look at the covert, it's more towards the security inks, uh, the high security requirement. Uh, government will need that brain inspector use these type of features to hide uh, these type of uh, hidden security features into the label and packaging uh, for the brand. And uh, the highest level is more the forensic where they have hidden patterns uh, that um, totally cannot be seen un uh, unless you bring back into the labs where they will use a microscope to actually view it and see that uh, it is uh, very secure like bank notes, like tax stamps and all that. So this is uh, the four layer that uh, we target on. And based on these four, what HP Indigo Secure have done is that they develop a three pillar. Uh, and this is the three pillar that we come up with, which is the security marks and design on the left. Uh, and we also have the security inks for the covert layers and onwards. And then we have the track and trace solutions uh, to allow the full diversion problems that people is facing. So on the left hand side, if you look at the marks and uh, uh, design features, uh, HP have our own plugins. We call it the, the Smart Stream Designer plugins uh, that can be installed in Illustrator or InDesign. Uh, so it allows you to very quickly have a special fonts called a micro text fonts that we can print this font at 0 0.5 point, which is very, very small. If you don't use the, the font, uh, if you try to make uh, the outline text to print them, uh, they, they won't be able to stay on. You can't even read them with a magnifying glass. So that is why it's very unique with, to, to have this sort of micro text features. Uh, we can do very small barcode and guillotine. Uh, also, we have three partners, uh, Haya, Ekfa, and Yura. So uh, we have partners that uh, is also under this uh, category where they have a software solution that helps for designing. Uh, and in the middle one, we have the security ink. So HP have uh, invisible yellow and blue, uh, which we will be showing you later on uh, on the HP uh, ink lab in Israel. Uh, and also we're coming out with the red and green. And this year we're also coming out with the color shifting inks. And today you're going to see all of this uh, from our ink lab in Israel as well. And of course, uh, verify me our uh, real uh, security partners that we have here. They have uh, worked with us very closely and we develop a uh, infrared ink uh, and they call it the rainbow secure ink and uh, later on uh, we will show you the full live demo of how this is all done and uh, on top of all that uh, we also have a uh, tag and ink that is being supported in uh, our technology uh, be secure and authentics uh, on the last part uh, we have uh, sorry in the last part, we have the track and trace solution. Uh, our partners, uh, there's a lot. Uh, so we have a uh, micro focus. So later on, you will see uh, Verified Me is also having a solution called VeryPass that is based on micro focus solutions. Uh, and we also have a uh, scan trust, everything, proof tech, and uh, advanced TNT. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, what a HPD Indigo uh, secure and encompass. Uh, so uh, all of our uh, PSP or our pr uh, printers that is uh, using our te uh, digital technology, uh, if they have any brands that is coming to them to say, we need some uh, brand security features, uh, we are able to offer this type of solutions to them. Uh, and if you look at the plugins that we have, uh, we the plugins that we offer today uh, contain the micro text, which is on the left hand side. Uh, it's very tiny text, uh, yeah. So you need the magnifying glass to really see it. Uh, and if you look into the second one, it's the very tiny micro uh, QR code or the data matrix code that you can use on different packaging requirement. Uh, and the, the one in the middle is a guillotine. Uh, so if you have a, a, a guillotine of patterns, uh, we can create uh, millions of different patterns based on one patterns. Uh, so we are using a mosaic uh, features uh, from our solutions to actually help you to multiply them and uh, make them uh, every single one is unique. The fourth one is the security fonts. Uh, so if you type a one, two, three, we, we're able to have a fonts that have a black lines coming on the back of the uh, numbering. Uh, so if anyone try to copy it, uh, this black thin line will be broken up and it's very easy to, to check whether it's a uh, counterfeit or not. Uh, the last one is more for uh, the books printers where they are able to have variable age printing uh, information to be printed on every single books. So if they are interested in do doing this type of features, we are able to do that as well. So on the, on the label, uh, most, our, most of our brands always come to us and say that they do not want to spend too much money. So they want to start with something that can help to protect them. So we always told the brand to, to start with something like a micro text. So this is how you do it. We have a small little micro text with some variable information, make it more difficult to counterfeit. Uh, and this is how uh, we can just print uh, into the design and you can't really see them until you put a, a, a magnifying glass on top of it. 
We also have partners like Haya. Uh, so Haya and us uh, work very closely. Uh, they are uh, from China. So they, they develop a QR code with uh, some of the fiber patterns and some numberings that you have to do a scan and match in order to uh, make sure that they are authenticated. Uh, and we also work with ECFA. Uh, ECFA have their own design software in Illustrator. Uh, and we uh, work together to come up with the HP Indigo Secure Studio. So this software uh, will be in Illustrator where uh, if the printers buy them, they can uh, do all this Giloche design. So all this Giloche design on my screen here, you can see a lot of them come with this variable data running into the Giloche. Uh, there's also um, images that uh, it superimposed into the background of the Giloche. Uh, so it's making the whole uh, design uh, very difficult to be counterfeited as well. Uh, and of course, um, it's very hard to uh, fit uh, security fit, uh, design to a, into a real uh, products. So what we have here is a, is a coffee uh, bag where we have a label here that the images, what we can do with FR technologies that we can convert into a line raster, a very thin line. And in the leaf, we can actually put variable uh, data in it and we can even have uh, everything to be different on every package. So this is a uh, very unique features that FR offer. On top of all this, uh, later on, uh, we will show you more about the UV invisible yellow. So this is a UV invisible yellow that we have come from HP. Uh, and on the left, uh, we printed it. And on the right, uh, once you have a UV light uh, shine on it, you can see uh, the printed uh, UV in. Uh, we also use it in QR code as well, where you can actually need a UV light to shine on it and scan it. So this is also another partnership with uh, Haya that we uh, have this scan and match. So if you scan it, you can actually see uh, the, uh, they, they call it the pills pattern where you were able to see the UV uh, pills that is flying around. So every single one QR code will be different in this sense. So if we go back to the last pillar, which is the track and trace solutions, uh, we work very closely uh, with brand as well to educate them to know more about supply chain efficiency and consumer engagement uh, in this uh, perspective. Uh, so what we have uh, promoting in the market today is uh, to have the brands to have every single products have their own unique ID. Uh, so this is also been done with what Verified Me and HP is doing today. So what you're going to see today uh, with us, you are able to see this technology as well. So most of the train trace solution will offer you the, the marks on the left hand side. Uh, it can be a QR code, it can be a secure QR, it can be a watermark. Uh, and then you have the authentication platforms on the mobile phone and it will link to the cloud platforms. And there is a train and trace dashboard that it can allows you to trace those uh, end user, uh, how, what is the activities, whether there is a suspected um, uh, illegal counterfeit going on around certain region. Uh, it can be diversion problems. So this is what the train and trace technology company comes with. And they also come with the integration service to help you to integrate to your supply chain. So mostly if you are talking to track and trace technology, this is what they will offer you. Uh, one partners that we work very closely with uh, is ScanTrust. So if you scan on the left-hand side, uh, you are able to uh, see uh, exactly uh, the products. Uh, and also it will show you whether the product is valid or invalid. Uh, and furthermore, he will give you more details about the product's journey uh, to let you know that uh, from the raw material to uh, the manufacturing all the way to the consumer hands. So where is the journey flying around the world? So this is how uh, ScanTrust built their platforms for. On top of that, we also added some uh, secure QR where you can uh, require to download an apps and actually scan it and it allows you to do a direct authentications of the products. Uh, and this is the special uh, micro dots that you see in the middle of the QR code. And this is one of the technology that ScanTrust have today. Uh, the last features that I'm going to show you for HP side is this uh, special scan sandwich printing technology. So what sandwich printing do is that uh, we can print a label and uh, the, this label, uh, if you see that when we peel the label off, there is a QR code inside the label. Yeah, uh, but this is all done in one pass. That means we print the QR code uh, first, CMYK, and then we print the white. Uh, and then we print the design outside. So this is all done in one single pass in our digital press. So this is a very unique features. We call it the sandwich printing features. And this is not only just on the label. Uh, this is also onto the flexible pouches like bags uh, and uh, any flexible bags that you're looking at. Uh, so we, we are able to do sandwich print. So he will print reverse printed and then uh, the QR code will be inside and then you print a Y and then you print the CMYK on top again. So we can go up to 16 layers of print inks. So this is how unique that our technology can be. And what you see on my screen here is a QR code that is inside where you will scan the QR code and then uh, you can do um, uh, authentication to the design outside 
of the uh, the flexible pack. So that that is also one idea that you can uh, put into your uh, pro product as well. So uh, this is all I have. You off? Yeah. Thank you, um, Dennis. It, it's really great to see the how powerful when all those technologies are coming together. Let's let's maybe summarize and capture uh, uh, this chapter with, with this question, if we can read it out. So brands are losing hundreds of billions of dollars on counterfeit, on counterfeit. how can HP Indigo Secure help? You can scan again um, the, and go to the Mentimeter questionnaire, uh, either by adding security des design to a product packaging, brand inspection using security invisible link, serialized codes with a track and trace uh, and, uh, and consumer engagement or all of the above aligning with the brand sustainability goals. I think this is a, a really captures um, you know, what we discussed uh, so far in this discussion. And, uh, and let's see uh, what's coming up uh, in the background. Dennis, are we yep. on the right track here? Yes. Uh, if you look at uh, these questions, um, we, we know that yeah, uh, because of all these losses that brand is facing, uh, HP Indigo Secure is there to help you. Of course, we, we encompass the design, the, the, the security inks, and also very importantly is the track and trace solutions. So um, with these three, uh, which is the, the most last one, which is the answer, which is all of above, uh, we, we help the brands to really uh, target the right thing uh, uh, on brand protection requirement. Uh, of course, there is more towards brand protection other than the printing side. Uh, but on the printing side, this is what we can put into the, your label and packaging uh, design uh, for your, your products. Great. So thank you for answering and, and, and engaging with the questionnaire. This, uh, this is very important to us. Um, let's now, now go back to the scenario um, that we had and, and specifically focus on the Verify Me technology with the HP Indigo digital print. And I'd like to share with you now a scenario that we were looking at in terms of the solution when it comes down to both consumer authentication and also the need of supply chain authentication. So we're going to um, launch now this next video to share with you from our uh, HP Indigo Center of Excellence here in Singapore. Hello, welcome to HP COE here in Singapore, Center of Excellence, and we are here to show you how the different technology of HP Indigo and Verify Me with a different set of solutions, with the different samples, and the portfolio of technologies that we have are going to be combined together over here. So, hi, Paul. Good to see hi, you again. Hi, Yoav. Great to see you. Yeah, so let's do it uh, right now here from the lab. Uh, I would like to invite my colleague Harris, uh, Harris to join us. Harris will be helping us to uh, facilitate and showcase also for the um, supply chain perspective. Hi, Harris. Hi. Hi, you are fine. You can join us here at our uh, studio uh, here in Singapore. And uh, together with Harris, Paul, we are going to see how or now we are going to use the different technologies. We are going to explain to you what we have. Uh, over here. Okay, so Harris, we have today two different products uh, that we'd like to start with. We're going to show you the supply chain authentication. This is the first one, uh, which is a nutraceutical uh, product, and this is the second one that we will show you. You can see on the right hand side there is the overt uh, QR code, and we're going to uh, leverage that as well. So I will ask Harris now to show you what we are using. How you can see the device that Harris has. Um, this is what Paul also shared uh, just before. Paul, maybe a few words about the device that Harris is holding on his hand. Yeah, sure. This is the uh, the very very pass authenticator. It's a patented solution uh, linking with the IR inks, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it's uh, compatible with any smartphone. I think we've got a. a, a Android uh, phone connected to the unit today. Yes, it has correct. IR, LED, and uh, UV capability. But today we're going to be showcasing how we read the the IR uh, marks and codes on that label. And just to stress, of course, that the labels that you're seeing have been produced in a single pass using an HP Indigo 6000 machine. 
That's correct. And this device has one-to-one -one relation, right, with the ink. So you cannot use for this uh, IR detector for any IR um, kind of ink or particles that are out there, right? So this is one-to-one -one relation between the products. That's right. All right. So this is the device that you will supply uh, to your brands that you're working with. You will train them how to use it. Uh, and this is part of your service. Yeah, absolutely. And often this is used in the where we have a, an authentication or a diversion problem where, you know, um, the, where the, the covert uh, marks and codes offer an even higher degree of security for the brand so that we can offer full track and trace and anti-diversion uh, capabilities using the, the marks, the codes and these authenticators. Yeah, thanks. That's clear. Okay. So, Paul, we are going to start now. Um, I will ask Harris also to share his uh, screen. So you will see we have already the latest uh, um, authenticating app installed on the phone. So, Harris, you can go ahead and share your screen and share sure. us. Yeah. yeah. Right. We can see it. I go to the very fast apps and then uh, I scan the visible QR code. So we're looking at the label right now. Um, we're starting with the, uh, the Nature Gift Nutraceutical uh, Supplements uh, product. And, and what Harry has done now, we have scanned the overt QR code. Okay, and what do we see on the screen? Yep. And that has gone up through the cloud, checked on the database to see that the code and to show that the code is has not been scanned too many times. It's scanned in the right area, the right region, the right country, and it's authenticated the overt code. And it will now ask to scan the invisible covert code. Okay. So they will, they will show us where's the invisible QR code. And so then you I... can see in the pink uh, icon over there, where supposed to be located the IR QR on the label, because visually, of course, our own eyes we cannot see. And then I click. So we're going to go to the label now again and the inspector knows where to search uh, for the product uh, and capture it. Yes, very fast. Great, so now that we see that for this product we create the relation and the authentication uh, being facilitated by the connectivity between the overall QR code uh, database to the uh, covert uh, one. Anything to add on that? No, that's great. And obviously that has been tracked in real time. If I quickly just shared my screen with you, yeah, and I should be ahead. able to just show you the uh, real time scan that's just come in. And this is the kind of dashboard that the brand would be looking at. You'd have a full geolocation of track of those visible and invisible code scanning in uh, in real time. Yeah, so we can see the red, uh, the greenish uh, dot over there. This is us here in uh, Singapore. Absolutely. Great. Um, so this is also happening for the inspector label. And now you have, let's go back to uh, this, the screen sharing. You have seen that you know, you, you are as a brand, you have many different products, you have many different SKUs as well. Um, so you go and you want to, you know, apply a level of security or multiple different uh, product lines. And inside the app, you can scroll down between the different product portfolio that you have. So let's test another one in the same manner. You can check on, you can scratch your screen as well. How is yes. you, you continue with your work day. Uh, you can get to inspect the product, maybe now in the retail uh, environment, to check that everything that's supposed to be there is uh, authentic. And now let's select from the drop down list another one. Um, the one that is the uh, allergy relief uh, product that we've seen before. Scan the feasible QR code. Okay, yeah, so we get the same result and now you get an indication uh, to move ahead to the IR. 
shows you again where the product should be. Uh, sorry, where the QR uh, should be. And you go to the same location uh, within the artwork, you capture uh, a QR and once you capture the QR, it creates the same, um, the same relationship that we have seen also before. Yeah. Right. So the same, the same concept, uh, this is what we are using the app uh, for this purpose. So you have seen the app, you have seen the dashboard. And now let us show you a few more uh, devices that we have on Verify Me. Uh, so we are back. Harris, thank you for uh, showing us uh, this one. We have more products uh, over here. And by the way, this authenticator comes in this very nice um, pack, as you can see here. So it's secure and, and very specific to your own uh, supply chain and uh, distribution. And we have more products over here. This is something that we actually printed here on our uh, HP Indigo 6K uh, press over here. We printed it with the, with the uh, IR in by me. This is how the aloe vera uh, product looks like. And we have more devices over here. Uh, as you can see, we have Two of them, these are the authenticator of uh, Verify Me. They will be giving you a go, no go signal as the brand inspector if the IR ink is there or not. So, this is how it would uh, look like. I, I will use the device. Okay. I open it up. It shows you that it is uh, fully charged. And I get a read on the location that I already know, by the way, from the app that's supposed to have uh, the IR ink. So if I go on the overt QR, which is printed, as you can see over here, with black color, I get nothing. Okay, I get no read. But once I go, you can hear it as well. But I, once I go to a QR code that was printed in this area, I can get the signal that the ink is there. And, and this is uh, giving me the, the indication that this product was printed as also authentic. So this is kind of a go, no go that is simpler than using the, the full authenticator. Another element that we have here is a, is a very simple uh, pen, which is an IR wavelength uh, pen. that allows me to shine also on the areas in the label that have the IR ink and shows me whether or not there is an ink if I use uh, just an, a UV torch, a UV light torch, and I shine in the places where it's supposed to be an IR ink, I won't get any signal. At the same level, vice versa, you know, if I take this label, which is a different label that has a UV invisible ink, not an IR, and I shine it, you can see the skeleton of the different figures coming up in UV yellow. However, if I use the pen, for the IR ink, I won't get any indication. I'm not illuminating um, or engaging anything that the, the UV ink. So this is how it is. Um, these are the uh, devices. There may be anything to add about those portfolio of different devices for inspectors or from your side. No, other than to say that um, you know the full training is given. Um, by ourselves, whether that's working with the PSP or working directly with brands uh, or working with partners. Um, we will take you through the process, we will introduce, we do proof of concept, and then we will be able to introduce the, the devices into their, into their portfolio so they can really improve their brand protection and anti-counterfeit, um, uh, anti-diversion, and obviously the customer engagement piece as well. Correct. Thank you for sharing that. And and before we end up, maybe we'll do uh, one more uh, authentication, this time from the consumer perspective. So I have the aloe vera uh, ink uh, over here. Aloe vera, <laughs> aloe vera uh, product uh, over here, as you have seen. This one uh, contains both the over and the over code. And I will use just my um, QR code in order to scan as a consumer, uh, the over the QR, the over the QR code. Let me show you how it's done. Okay, so I'm being directed to the landing page. 
what do we see over here? Um, can you share with us, yep, Paul? Just, yep, just press to authenticate, please, Joav. Verify this product. Yep. Okay. All right. And, as we, and I get yep. a note, congratulations. Uh, Veripass has successfully verified the authenticity of your product. And you could scroll down a little bit, Joav, just to see you could then take the customer on any kind of journey as we may have seen before with the uh, the example I showed on my slides, um, we can take them on a journey. It could be user instructions, um, certificates of analysis. It could be where to buy your next product, uh, videos, and also maybe even feedback. So you could get some customer feedback linked through to different websites. Uh, customer feedback could then allow you to gain the data from the consumer and enable you to market as a brand to that consumer on a consistent basis. So it's a very powerful tool. And what I'd like to do quickly is just share my screen again, if I could. Go ahead. Yep. And then with that customer engagement piece, the brand would have access to the dashboard that would show where those scans are taking place and it would show any alerts or triggers where a scan was taking place out of area, out of region or too many times, which adds another yet another layer of anti-counterfeit um, uh, protection to the brand. And if I just run the real-time activity scans, we would see again a number of scans that have taken place today from uh, from the uh, COE down there with uh, with your phone, you have. So thank you very much for that. And just quickly here, I would just show you the uh, the actions and the triggers that if anything had happened where a code had been used too many times, you'd be able to dive into that information and see exactly where that code was being scanned. Obviously, this is a, a, these are demonstration codes and we are scanning them all over the world. You could imagine that if you've got a product that is for sale in China or Turkey or UK and those codes are showing up on an alert and they trigger and showcasing and being showed all over the world and being scanned all over the world, I think we could have agreed that there was a, a diversion and an authentication problem uh, with that particular product and that code. And that code could then be locked down, secured, and we give a different message to the end user when they scan that, that product. Right, great. Thanks for sharing that. So we have okay. seen here, thank, thank, thank you Paul for sharing that. And, and thank you Harris for uh, helping us here with the uh, authentication. We have seen different uh, set of technologies, authentication, brand protection, the vision side from the consumer side. You've seen the different uh, devices that we have been uh, using here for the Verify Me end-to-end uh, -end, uh, process. We have seen the different uh, elements that we have with, with all the products. And with that, I'd like to take you now back a little bit in time to how the entire development actually have started. And for that, we have a very special guest here today with us all the way from our uh, development R&D uh, in Israel. So we are going to continue with that. And thank you for um, coming here to Singapore to see what we have prepared for you over here. See you soon again. Thanks, Joav. Um, great, so maybe before we fly off to Israel, uh, Paul, um, I wanted to ask you, I think that, you know, this is a question that we get uh, quite a lot. Um, so, you know, we have uh, multiple PS PSPs, uh, converters, uh, partners in, in, in different countries around the globe. Um, what, do, what do we do in terms of making sure that the supply chain of this very highly secured a unique solution of ink uh, together with your platform is, is indeed secure uh, and controlled. Yeah, sure. So, <clears throat> yeah, so I mean, we work with uh, with obviously with HP um, very closely in developing the Rainbow Secure solution. We have a secure supply chain in the US, and then we would work with uh, regional partners 
um, um, globally to control that supply chain. You can't buy these inks online. You can't go to other vendors. We have only one or two um, distributors where we can where we can allocate permissions to provide the inks. S1 being one uh, for uh, Europe, EMEA, and North America, and we are just in the throes of. Uh, negotiating um, our distributor for APJ region as well at the moment. So obviously all, all highly secure, uh, controlled uh, supply chain. Great, that's, that's indeed very important. And, and in, almost by each and every project, we don't commercially offer it off the, pla off, you know, off the shelf. This is taking care of on a one-to-one -one basis. Yeah. And we really look into the opportunity, what's the brand need is, and based on that, the supply chain is being planned ahead of time per volume and per distribution and location. So indeed, as I said before, let's go back um, and talk a little bit about the unique development that we have done together. And I'd like to take us now uh, to Israel and we'll share about that. HP Indigo Electro Ink's unique structure makes them pigment agnostic, enabling you to print with the largest variety of colors and spot inks digital printing has ever seen. Introduce you HP Indigo R&D Ink Lab in Israel. My name is Olga Kagan and I'm R&D Security Program Manager. And today we will make a short introduction to our technology. As you know, in the printing world, there are three main technologies. The analog printing, inkjet printing, and HP Indigo LP Digital Printing. HP Indigo Digital's strong advantage is in the linkage between development process, production process, and ink integration in the press. But today, our focus will be on our uh, leading candidates in brand protection inks. They are ink which based on the very famous uh, rainbow secure pigments. And uh, Tamar, now we'll start the technical part. Please, it's your call. Thank you, Olga. So as Olga introduced me, my name is Tamar, and I'm leading the development of our security ink portfolio. And today, we will give you a little taste of what we have and what we prepare. Thank you, Tamar. I also have a few questions for you. So please explain what's the difference between the development of uh, security inks and commercial inks? Well, our process is very robust. And there's, so there's no much difference. The difference comes from the unique properties of the pigment. And our technology is so robust that it allows us to uh, produce a wide variety of inks for wide variety of applications. Thank you. So can you please explain for us the difference between production, between security inks and commercial inks? The main difference is we created with the help and advice of Verify Me a secure environment in our manufacturing plan. The environment is completely restricted and we created a new secure supply chain that begins right from the raw material arrival until last of the finished goods production and shipment. And inside our facility, everything, whether it's the raw material or the ink, are locked and with, limi with limited access. Okay, thank you, Tamar. So can you please ask regarding your car security and brand protection ink portfolio and your future steps? So as you know, we already have invisible UV inks. We have blue and we have this beautiful yellow. We are expanding our portfolio in the invisible UV inks department and this is the red that we are working on, as you can see. And also we have green for brand protection. Let me show you 
how strong the signal of our UV green. Please turn on the light. But it's not the only new inks we are working on. And I will, I am proud to show you our color shifting ink. And as you can see, I hope you see it well in the camera, the beautiful color change of our ink. This is quite a breakthrough to achieve it with LEP technology. And also, although we have many more, I will show you our last one. And this is our micro ink, as you can see. And Olga, how much do you want me to write on the check? Give me, give me checks. <laughs> so Tamar, can you give me some checks to pay my bills? <laughs> Thank you. Please be generous, we are friends. Okay, so thank you, Tamar. Good luck in your resources and development. See you. Thank you, and we are excited to show you our new products and excited to have you buy them and use them. Right, okay. Um, so let's see, we have, we have Dennis in Australia, we have Paul in Switzerland, I'm here in Singapore, Hazam is in KL. And we also visited Israel. So I hope that you enjoyed the last uh, hour or so. Um, and Hazan, maybe you can take us through some uh, of the. the yeah, so I think uh, because we are quite uh, uh, small on time, I think we can have one question, which is uh, what is the most impactful scenario in terms of combining Verify Me and HP and Digo solutions uh, in the market? Um, Right, so I, I will repeat the question and meanwhile, Dennis, maybe you and Paul can, can think of a few ideas. Um, the, the question is, what do we, what do we have seen from different use cases that we can probably not name them, but in terms of finding the right layers, we speak about this layered solution, what are the layers that we see in the market that are uh, impactful? And especially when it comes down to the demonstration that we have seen with the IR inks of Verify Me go with the power of variable data printing. So Paul, Dennis, any comment on this? I mean, I, I, I would, one of the biggest clients that we work with um, is, the, is the pure cost of what counterfeit does. Where, you know, by spending, you know, uh, spending 5%, uh, of, of, of that revenue to, you know, reduce counterfeit by 50% is an enormous saving for the, for the larger brands, uh, especially with multiple units. That's what, that's what the, the minute that question, uh, has he mentioned that question, that's, that's what I see as the biggest impact, a, a, an absolute return on investment very quickly with a, a reduction of, of that counterfeit problem and that loss of revenue, loss of profit um, and, and, whether that's through diversion, uh, complete counterfeit, or gray market, um, that's where that's where we can have big results very quickly. Yeah, fully agree with Paul. Uh, I think on on my side, I I want to share is that HP want to have a portfolio where we combine all security features into the label and packaging products. Uh, so uh, we have, we see brands is uh, embracing not only just one technology, but they have their own products that will add uh, micro text or add uh, security design. They will also use UV. They will also put infrared in like verify me into the same package. And we, we've seen this the customer do do that. And uh, the whole idea is so that uh, because of the counterfeiters is getting with a um, better technology, uh, they, they are improving as well into how to counterfeit your products. Uh, more or less, they will miss something when they counterfeit. And, and this is what we are aiming for, where uh, by a full combination of these type of security layers that we're putting on, uh, counterfeiters will eventually miss something and they won't be able to counterfeit, uh, counterfeit everything. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Dennis. All right. Thanks, Dennis. Uh, thanks, Yoav, and thanks, Paul, for this insightful presentation and demonstration of uh, thanks, Verify Me, uh, Rainbow Secure, and HP Indigo uh, solutions. I think we can now, uh, I can share my screen for the next slide. For our next session, uh, it will be, all right. So yeah, uh, I would like to encourage all the attendees to please visit at our virtual uh, exhibition and stop by HP Indigo uh, booth and Verify me both at www.hspbb.com. So that will take you to our virtual booth. Please stop by and uh, 
can load the content on the website over there. All right, so our next topic will be titled Combating Illiterate in Tax-Free Zones by Afta Balush, who is an ex-officer of Customs and Tax Administration of Pakistan. He has an illustrious career of 34 years of service at his credit, both on enforcement as well as policy side. He also served on various senior positions of Commerce and Finance Ministry, and he held a diplomatic assignment as a minister for trade in Pakistan, uh, for Pakistan in Moscow, Russia. So I think... Uh, Aftab, you can join us on the stage now. Aftab, are you here? Yep. Can you hear me? Great. Yep, I can hear you clearly. So I'll share your slides now. Can I start? All right. Hello, everybody. This is Aftab Bluch from Pakistan. And I would like to start with saying good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Somewhere it would be morning, somewhere it would be in the afternoon. Here in Pakistan, it's afternoon, somewhere in the evening, and somewhere night. Let me start my presentation by saying thanks to Mr. Hazim for inviting me to come on this forum and share something about the illicit trade. I had a service career of 34 years in Pakistan Customs Service, starting from a, a, a lower level officer. And then I reached at my higher level, that's the last level of the federal government being the federal secretary and why I was assigned the job of chairman of the export or, or trade free zones in Pakistan being my last assignment. Taking this opportunity on this, I would like to uh, invite the various solution providers who are exhibiting their products in this conference that we have started the track and trace system in Pakistan on latest on our various products. We have started with tobacco, we have started with sugar, we have started with beverages, we have started with fertilizer, and we have started with cement. So we are going to, uh, to put the tax stamp and tra track and trace system on all these products, on the local production, in order to monitor their performance, and the government should uh, take the proper uh, revenue which is due from them. So I would invite everybody to participate in our, in our international tenders and in our international uh, uh, international uh, uh, competition so that they can also have a fair idea and uh, explore the market of Pakistan. Thank you. Let me start my presentation by saying and telling what is a tax-free zone. Next slide, please. A tax-free zone, as you know, is a geographical area, an area where the goods may be landed, they may be stored, they may be handled, manufactured, packed, or repacked under a customs rules, and they are generally not subject to customs duty. The main purpose of the development of tax free zones is to provide significant opportunities for the legitimate business. The regulated regulations, the limited taxes and reduced oversight helps in driving economic growth and facilitate increased international trade and investment. Next. There are around, around 3,000 tax-free zones in one form or, or the another and 135 countries around the world, providing 68 million jobs and having an investment of around 500 billion US dollars. Its bifurcation is seen on the screen. 23% is in Americas, 17% in Africa, 19% uh, in Asia Pacific region, 22% in Sub Sahara, and 19% in Central and Eastern Europe and Central Asian countries. Next, please. Before going to the illicit trade, let me say that why these tax-free zones were created. These tax-free zones were created in order to stimulate a multitude of economic benefits for the countries. These include increased trade, imports, new business formations, generation of foreign exchange, technology transfer, and knowledge spillover. Now, coming to the illicit trade, what is the illicit trade? An illicit trade, as you know, and it is mentioned on the screen, it is an exchange in the control 
and possession of goods or services that a law maker nationally or internationally deems illegal because the object of the exchange is dangerous and unlawful and it, it is due to tax evasion or morally repugnant. Next. Next, please. Coming to the purpose of establishments of the tax-free zones. The tax-free zones are normally established for the development of a specific area. That means in a country where the area is not so developed, in order to develop that area, the governments, um, uh, the governments initiates and embark an area as a tax-free zone. The purpose is to generate the economic development of that specific area, provide employment to the uh, locals there, boost their local industrialization, both in terms of manufacturing as well as service industries. And it helps in increasing the exports of the country so that the country becomes self-sufficient in exports. Their products are, are, uh, are launched in the international market and in exchange, the government earns foreign exchange for the country. Next, please. Next slide, please. Now, what is the threat of the illicit trade? The illicit trade is normally in the form of a mullet money laundering. The people, the tax evaded, evaded money, the, 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 the revenue leakage money that is, that is generated from the tax-free zones that is ultimately money laundered through unofficials and illegal means. The other threat is of smuggling. A lot of smuggling takes place in these tax-free zones because normally there are lax customs rules and regulations. There is no proper check. And even in Pakistan, these goods, which are not otherwise importable, they are, can be allowed to be imported in the tax-free zones because their ultimately purpose would be to produce the goods and export it. Due to this smuggling, due to this smuggling, these uh, the tax the goods they are they are not uh, paid the duties and they are ultimately uh, exported or smuggled into the tariff areas tariff areas means the goods where they are subjected to duty but these goods since they were to be produced in export processing zones or or trade free zones these were to be ultimately exported but they are normally not exported and usually the 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 the, the, the unscrupulous elements, they trade it into the local market, thereby, thereby evading the duty and taxes. The products that are manufactured illicitly and in the tax-free zones, they are normally in the form of a cigarettes. They are fake and medicines. They are fake uh, cosmetics. They are fake toys. And they are fake and counterfeit electronics. Next, please. The illicit trade-related instances, they are formed, as I informed earlier in my earlier slide, in the form of cigarettes, cosmetics, toys, and electronics. They are, they are also counterfeit product, uh, products, and that products, they sub, uh, sub, uh, subvert, uh, subvert the uh, intellectual property rights. They are falsified, they are counterfeit medicines, they are unregulated uh, and unreported fishing, uh, uh, fishing articles. They are an illegal supply of arms. They also trade in indigenous indigen species and wildlife trafficking. As I told, they are also their monetary laundering and they also become a hub of the narcotic supply because the customs doesn't have proper control over there. They are lax regulations and there are no proper checking or control of the customs. That's why they normally they take the advantage of these two poles. Next, please. Now, coming to Pakistan case, I be, being the, 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 the chairman of, of my last sign, being, being the chairman of the trade free zones, we see that the major illicit trade was in the form of a smuggling. The government allows the raw materials for, for the import or duty free import for the goods which are to be produced and manufactured in the tax free zones and ultimately exporters exported. The goods are normally sub, not subject to state customs check. They are, uh, they are imported and in the garb of the importation of the, of the goods, they are, they are finished goods coming into the trade free zones and ultimately, ultimately, in spite of sending it to, for the exports, 
they use to supply it into the local market and evade the duties and taxes. Then there is also an exemption from the national import policy. There are various goods which were uh, not in, on the negative list as a customs officers. Being a negative list means they are not importable to the country uh, and not to be used. But the people in the garb of the tax-free zones, they, they, they disguise it, they import it into the tax-free zones, and then they ultimately smuggle into the domestic market. market. Similarly, there are import, duty free imported items. There are certain items, uh, raw materials, uh, uh, which are imported to be duty free for use in the products that, which are ultimately to be exported. These duty free imported goods, they are imported into tax free zones, but in spite of being used for the manufacture of the finished product, they are as such imported through customs weaknesses into the domestic market, there, thereby. Uh, coming into the non-duty tax pay and uh, non-duty tax payment as well as evasion, we under the under the Pakistan's Customs Act, Section 2S, we we saw that if their goods are non-duty paid, they are treated to be a smuggled goods. Then there was the last issue was that was uh, regarding financial corruption or financial mismanagement. All the banks which were located into the tax-free zones, they used to collect the the money in foreign exchange. And these tax-free zones branches, they were used by the banks to park their loans into the uh, uh, outshore, uh, outshore banking units. So in this way, these loans were not shown into the into the into the uh, depths of the uh, of the of, of the banks, and but they are parked into the depths of the uh, branches that were uh, that were uh, uh, that were established or that were located in the tax-free zones. But ultimately, this anomaly, we got it reduced. And now all these uh, banks, they are supposed and obliged to report all these transactions to the central bank of state or state bank of Pakistan as at par with the other banking regulations. Next, please. Now, how to, uh, to come back or to, uh, to control or to minimize the illicit trade? The international forums at various levels, they pass these resolutions. O OECD passed public governance committees uh, task force. They reported on various measures or uh, on countering illicit trade uh, and Kyoto Convention. Then there was WCO Dubai Declaration on combating counterfeiting. Then there is WCO uh, Declaration of the on the Customs Cooperation on the role of customs in prevailing illicit trafficking. All these resolutions were passed in order to prevent the illegal traffic or illegal trade into the tax-free zones. Next, please. Here's another declaration of the customs on the tax-free zones. They passed at the International Forum and the Interpol, Interpol. And because of they conducted two operations, Operation, operation Pengua against illicit medicine and Operation Mayo against trans, trans, transnational organized crime engaged in the traf in the traffic of illicit goods. Next, please. Now the question arises, okay, we have uh, agreed and we have admitted or we have faced this illegal trade. Now, how to combat it? There are two, two prone strategy is to be adopted. The number one strategy is to be at the international level and the other strategy is to be at the national or the uh, national government level. These two, they have to strengthen the national government so that they should adhere to the international convention. For example, we have the Kyoto Convention Chapter 2 uh, Annex D, but it is not being implemented. It is not binding on various countries. Various countries they adopt it, but they are, but they don't, um, uh, but they don't implement it. And various countries they implement it, so there's a dichotomy. Then there's also a, another another. Uh, uh, another measure that is to be taken is to empower the National Customs Authority because the National Customs Authorities, the, the tax-free zones, they say they, they don't come under the customs authorities. So there is a relaxed regulations, there is a relaxed customs control or a loose cust custom control for which undue benefits is being taken by the uh, unscrupulous elements. Then we see that there should be a balanced approach between economic, economic benefits and controls. No doubt the tax-free zones 
are being established in order to provide economic be uh, economic be benefits both nationally and internationally. But there should all there is also a need that there should be a proper role and control of the custom so that there should be a balanced approach be between the benefits as well as the controls. Then there is also a need to adopt legislative and regulatory measures to enforce intellectual property protection in the tax-free zones. Tax-free zones people or tax-free zones authority, they consider that the, that the uh, IPR or, or TRIPS regulation does not come, uh, they does not come under their control. Whereas there should be a judicial enforcement of the custom jurisdiction on the FTZ so that to enforce the rules of uh, uh, rules of uh, goods, uh, origin of goods, rules of origin of goods, as well as the transshipment and, and, and custom transit. Then the customer should have a right to carry out the check at any time on the goods stored in a free trade zone. Normally, these free trade zones, zones are declared as a, as a zone which does not come under the national territory. So that's why the, the zone authorities, they, they don't allow the customs people to check and come and check or counter whether the goods are in accordance with the, with the rules and regulations, whether they are properly stored and whether they are not mixed with the other goods. Then the leakages are to be prevented. As, as I informed earlier, that there is a leakages of revenue because of the goods which are imported for the tax-free zones, they find their way into the local market and there's an evasion of the government duties and taxes. Then there's another, another, uh, another uh, uh, action that is to be taken, is to be taken, is to integrate the, 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 data, the data systems so that the tax-free zones, the customs authorities, and the zone operators, they work in line with each other. Then the final is that the final is that the national customs automated system, that is the system with the national customs, it should be automated and it should be linked with the, the, the tax-free zones authorities, with these tax-free zones operators, and with the national customs, so that the data is exchanged and there should be an interface and they should be properly monitored through their data. Next. The, the way forward. The way forward is both at the national level and the international level, there, there should be a proper uh, legislations. The legislation, the loopholes in the legislation should be properly plugged. And the legislation, if it is made, it should be properly and re uh, regularly measured for implementation. Then there is a need that the, to adopt the Re revised Kyoto Conventions, as well as the TRIPS, whatever there are conventions, they should be binding on various countries in accordance with their circumstances so that the illicit trade should be minimized to a, uh, to a certain level. Then the business modeling of the tax-free zones they, and, the, the, and its implementation should be a user inter-friendly agencies. Cooperation, that means there should be a cooperation between the, the tax-free zone operators, the cooperation between the tax-free zone authorities, and the cooperation with the custom. Because at certain times, my, my, my experience, that the custom people comes and checks and comes for a, for a check or for a routine audit, but the tax-free zone authorities and the tax-free zone operators, they say, oh, we are outside the custom area, you don't have any authority, you can't come and check, and that, that gives a, an advantage to the in these these operators then there's also a need to reinvigorate the role of customs agencies in monitoring and and enforcement the customs people they should be properly trained they should be properly uh, uh, equipped with their equipment so as to monitor what is happening in the tax free zone whether the goods that are, that are that are being imported they are in accordance with the rules and regulation whether the goods that are being manufactured they are manufactured properly they are being followed with the rules and regulation and that there is a proper enforcement so that the custom, whenever they want to check, they should check it and see that the goods are in accordance with the proper rules and procedures. Then there's also a need to have an education of the customs people on and the financial institutions on the uh, free trade zone related crimes. Because you see customs people, they are sometimes posted into the tax free zone as, as I see in, in Pakistan, that they are not so much competent and they don't have so much knowledge into the into the, the goods which are being produced in the tax free zones and the tax free zones and the or users or the unscrupulous elements 
they're taking the advantage of the customs people that uh, their their inefficiency or their uh, lack of knowledge they use the un undue they take the undue advantage and under the guard of, garb of that undue advantage they 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 normally produce and manufacture the goods and the illicit goods and they, these illicit goods illicit goods ultimately find their way into the local market let me conclude that in the recently the recent wco conference on the tax free zones they have concluded that the customs should be uh, simultaneously in, engaged in the tax free zones from the uh, from the very start from the very beginning the customs should be involved in the implementation and the uh, of and formulation of the rules and regulations and they should be properly engaged with the tax free zones and then they say, say that they that the basic risk issue is the data. The data, if the data is properly monitored, if the data is properly shared and the data is properly uh, integrated, that will in, in a certain way uh, minimize the illicit trade in the tax-free zones. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aftab, for your sharing. I think this was a very informative uh, presentation in terms of illicit trade and free zones and how are the measures uh, to reduce illicit trade and hopefully eliminate it and eliminate counterfeits. It was a very informative session. Thank you. Thank you so much. So allow me to share my screen for the next session uh, titled how the acceleration of digitalization has increased illicit trade and the best practices to fight against it to be presented by Jerome Bishop, the Business Development Director for Brand Protection in Europe and Asia Pacific for Delarue. Uh, Jerome Bishop joined Delarue in 2015 as the Head of Product Marketing for Authentication and Traceability with a focus to develop a product roadmap for brand protection and government security solutions. He has been actively participating to develop a digital tax change scheme for Delarue, and he was appointed in his current role earlier this year to boost brand protection sales. So thanks for joining us today, Jerome. Thank you, Azim. It's a pleasure to, to be with you today. Uh, second time I'm participating to your, uh, to your uh, virtual event and it's always uh, very well organized. Thank you, Jerome. So, I think the screen is, uh, the stage is yours. You can share your screen now. All right, tell me when you can see it. Yep. It's okay. Um, yep, I think you can slideshow, yep. Yeah. Is it okay now? Full screen? Yep, perfect, perfect. Well, Best thank you yours. again. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for uh, leaving me the floor for half an hour. So yeah, working, uh, I mean, I'm Jerome, uh, based in uh, sunny L London today. So good morning, everyone, or good afternoon if you're based in, in Asia. And uh, we are, uh, I'm working for Dollarue. Uh, we are a company which is specialized in security product. And Dollarue is, is, is a British company uh, uh, listed in the, in the stocks, stock exchange here in, in London. And uh, it has been fighting against illicit uh, trade, any kind of uh, illicit activities for more than 200 years. So uh, mainly uh, doing uh, uh, currency, uh, which uh, which is where we've we we've been known for, uh, yeah, uh, in most of uh, you know countries in 140 countries in the last 20 30 years, but also uh, supplying and that was interesting to uh, to listen to Aftab uh, Balak before in Pakistan because we are also supplying government revenue solution. Uh, so full solution on behalf of government where we are fighting against illicit trade. Uh, but the point of this, of this talk today will be uh, brand protection. <clears throat> and brand protection when we deal, when we embark with a, a one-stop solution uh, provider with, with brand owners. And, and we talk to brands which are internationally, uh, uh, with their internationally uh, covering presence to implement program which at the scale, the cost, and uh, yeah, the speed they want to, to implement it. And, and talking about speed, how uh, you know, COVID-19 accelerated actually the, uh, the increase of illicit trade. Well, this will be one of the, of the topic of this uh, presentation, but also sharing our experience uh, in, a, in a very humble manner where we will uh, you know, uh, welcome all your comments and, and feedback all around the, the discussion and, and the presentation. So, 
what is the agenda in, in short, right? Counterfeiting, well, well, is it really an issue? I think uh, it has been covered, but we will, we will give some, some figures around that. And why, as a brand, should I do something about it? That's, that's the question a brand has to ask itself. Uh, the, the main competition is not another solution provider. The, pro, the main competition is not to do anything. And, and I've been in this industry for 20 years, and, and really I don't understand sometimes where the, uh, the uh, brand are not paying more attention to that. Uh, Paul, uh, or you have mentioned in their previous presentation that uh, it's, it's high, it is proven to be a high return on investment. Let me share you that for government where we're implementing solution like the tax time schemes described by AFTAB, the return on investment is 20 to 30 percent, so increase of revenue for the government. So uh, it is definitely something we uh, we should uh, uh, we should do something about it, and we will see what uh, what we can do. Benefits: I talk about the, the ROI. It's not even an investment. It's it's uh, it's uh, it's really creating value for my brand. Sharing some best practices also uh, and how it is used, and uh, we will uh, deep dive in. Uh, several of, uh, of business cases we, we have had and we have implemented uh, on, on, on different verticals, different segments, different industry uh, segments, and we will finally talk about our uh, own solution. So counterfeiting, a global issue. Wow, you know, uh, 25 trillion uh, US dollar, this is the uh, estimation for the worldwide trade uh, uh, economy, uh, and, and about three to seven percent of this uh, economy is subject to illicit trade. So the topic of this presentation will be focusing specifically on manufacturing goods. And if you talk only about manufacturing goods, these which are subject to illicit trade, we are already talking about 460 billion, uh, many, many numbers, but it's, it's the equivalent of the GDP of, uh, of Belgium, uh, which, is, uh, which is quite amazing. Um, and, and then I will not deal with everything which is stream, uh, streamly, uh, illicitly online uh, uh, music or videos. So any products really can be counterfeit. You know, the COVID-19, we already hear uh, some uh, warnings from Interpol organization that uh, counterfeiters are on it. So it's just coming, you know, uh, out of the, of the press. Uh, to take a, 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 a printing a, a, a kind of, of expressing itself. And, and then it is subject to counterfeiting, which is amazing. And, and, and there is no uh, relationship now with the value of the good and the, uh, and the uh, counterfeitings. Uh, it is, uh, on the contrary, uh, subject to any product which is manufactured on the, on, the, on the world. Even face masks have been counterfeited this year. Obviously, the, the uh, COVID-19 has shown us also massive, massive increase of uh, uh, purchase online, which is linking to my next topic, why uh, this uh, brand, uh, I mean, uh, purchase online has been actually uh, facilitating, in some extent, the uh, counterfeiting issues for brand. So, uh, let me share with you what we did with Alliance for Gray Market Abatement, the EGMA uh, organization which is fighting in the US against anti-counterfeiting. And we've been interviewing uh, anti piracy so brand protection managers, in eight uh, different leading brands, at eight different leading brands. And four themes have been identified for uh, brand protection. The one is acceleration of counterfeit. Well, increase of the agility of criminals and, and, uh, and use of poorly regulated online marketplace to sell illicit product. The second, uh, criteria, the, the second theme which has been uh, highlighted is the expansion of market vulnerabilities, uh, likely to be a long lasting effect for COVID-19. Uh, this has also impact the brand integrity, actually the, the brand visibility what is my route to the market uh, by the acceleration on the uh, purchase online? Then you have geopolitical trade conflicts, uh, GDPR issues, uh, how to protect my, my personal data, geopolitical trade. This is exactly what, uh, what was the topic of the uh, of Haftab before. Uh, this has been also uh, 
um, a impacted, uh, uh, I would say, consequently as well, because enforcement is seen uh, by government authorities, but also by brand as expensive, which is, again, something we will try to, uh, to kill as, a, as an ID. Better use of data analytics. Too much information is killing the information today. Okay, well, so how can I get the right insight coming from this big data and uh, uh, monitor efficiently uh, how to combat uh, illicit trade activities. So you can see that the technology has, has double uh, a face uh, on its middle, right? Uh, uh, ob obviously, it's much more sophisticated, but it's also lots easier now for counterfeiters to print acceptable simulation of uh, secure prints. Why should I do something uh, about it as a brand? Well, first of all, because your brand and, and the brand has, has a value only because uh, the, the consumer are uh, giving trust to your brand. So the trust is the criteria number one. And then how do you guarantee this trust is by uh, giving the security along the supply chain, how it is distributed and how it is enhancing the uh, consumer utilization. So uh, this is the, the third uh, uh, point. And, and what a brand owner needs is not one solution. It's a combination. It's a modular solution approach. Uh, uh, you need to embark uh, as, a, as a brand protection manager or anti-piracy uh, leader of your organization, the right people within your organization. Is it the supply chain director? Is it the sales and marketing? Is it even you know, the CEO that has to uh, sit in this uh, and steer really the, the brand protection program? That's really good question for you. Understanding why uh, trustability is different from authentication, we will spend some time on this because this is also uh, much uh, of the time often uh, a kind of confusion. Yeah, because I've got a, a code on my, on my product, then it is authenticated. Well, it's not so easy and, and we, will, uh, we will see how and, 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 uh, and why it is not uh, such uh, an evidence. And then you have question for a brand protection program, uh, which are how to improve the consumer engagement, because this is now not only brand protection, but it's also about marketing activities. We, uh, we have a brand in, in the US where they have a, a number of reports uh, of their uh, consumer bringing some data, but also enabling them you know, to uh, develop loyalty program. How complex is your supply chain? Uh, we often say that for a country to control its border, it's, uh, it is probably easier because they have the authority to do it. For a brand selling to multiple countries, that's much more of a challenge. But it, this would need you know, a better understanding of your current supply chain and how to, uh, to want to, uh, to efficiently uh, I, uh, monitor it. Uh, how to implement a solution without disruption. This is a key. Uh, the, the, the brand, when they are manufacturing goods, they don't want to stop the production because they're implementing a program and what kind of uh, return on investment I can have. So impacts on the business, uh, acceleration of the business online. You, you see the, the brick and mortar shops or so the traditional shops, they've been implementing some sanity measures, uh, which is visible here in the, in the, in the picture, but also uh, talking with, uh, with brands, uh, one, one, one of us told us uh, just after the first lockdown here in Europe, which was ending around a, uh, March, April, uh, they were telling us that in, uh, they want two or three years digitization in few months lockdown. So uh, they, the, the brand have completely revolutionized their way to address the uh, market demand by selling much more online, and uh, increasing drastically actually their uh, marketplace uh, online demand activities. So there is a way to control that and we will see that later in the presentation, but uh, you have also a double impact. So the increase of the online activity as well as uh, imposition of some regulation, specifically in pharma, uh, which has been was one of the most regulated uh, market. Well. Uh, after uh, mentioned tobacco, which is probably also the second one being uh, extremely uh, regulated in, uh, in uh, most of the countries, and CSR activities, which are 
uh, uh, forcing now the brand uh, because of the consumer expectation to properly um, track uh, the product from the, uh, the users and how it is recycled and uh, eventually uh, giving a second life. Uh, rethinking the customer experience, maintaining the customer trust in my brand value and following up the consumer engagement program, this has the, to be the, uh, the key uh, criteria for, for a brand. And the benefits then? Well, <laughs> how to keep the trust for your brand? This is the, the, what we said before, right? Uh, we've been working uh, for Microsoft on behalf of Microsoft for more than 20 years. And we identified all the AEOM, EOM, sorry, the integrator, the integrator of uh, Microsoft Office, uh, wherever they're located. So mostly in Asia, but, uh, but not only, uh, more than 240, 50 uh, different locations in the world. The, and, and this is what we are sh sharing on the screen on the, on the right hand side. How to, speak of, uh, to spot a fake? Well, price, quality of good and packaging. Uh, when you are pur purchasing it in a, in a traditional shop, but also when you're receiving it uh, from, uh, from the, the marketplace online. And there is a very important need, not from the brand, for your consumers to um, uh, a, 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 a flight to safety. Uh, they want to have the guarantee the product they are buying is genuine and even more when they're unboxing the, the product. So the first time right experience is critical. And then you can eventually uh, engage with your consumers with QR code and building this kind of uh, loyalty program to successfully uh, engage with, uh, with most of them and enlarging your, uh, your loyalty program activities. So delightful unboxing experience. Yes, rethinking your customer engagement. Talking about the same uh, uh, McKinsey uh, survey uh, in April uh, 2020 this year, there is not only this uh, uh, flight to uh, safety, but also the touch and feel experience in of physical store is very, very important. I don't know uh, about uh, uh, you all over, over the globe, but we always pay more attention to a Christmas card or letter we are receiving in hand rather than an email, another email, and so on and so forth. So the touch and feel experience is definitely something which is touching your, uh, your consumer. So increasing how your customer can say, well, this brand is magic, to have the what we call the wow effect well, this is exactly uh, what a, a, a brand protection uh, program can enable as well. It's not only brand protection, but it's also brand enhancement, as we said. So which best practices are used today? Well, you can say, and, and you can hear, and you know, uh, again, I remember probably uh, in, the, in the late 80s, the beginning of the, uh, uh, 90s, we, we were uh, thinking that the, uh, the, the, the desk will be uh, zero paper, paperless, right? You, we all hear about that. Internet will revolutionize the, uh, the way of, of printing and using uh, print. Well, it's not so obvious. Um, and and, and uh, physical security features are far from being updated. Only 57%, 57 I think it's now 59, I've seen a, an article very recently, worldwide of the population has access to internet. So, you know, a vast majority still doesn't have access to it. And an over security is not only uh, valuable, it's extremely necessary. Uh, it's um, having a good secure uh, marking or label is a must have for your, uh, your goods. And in this digital world, how, how do I know it is genuine? Uh, well, Overt security is not only valuable, but, but necessary, as we said, and relying on the digital is an add-on to the physical security features you're, you're bringing to. So it's a complementary combined approach, enjoying uh, all the physical, um, highly secure um, uh, features we can produce for banknotes or security documents. So you can imagine what we can do for your brand and the digital platform a multi-suite platform to uh, 
confirm the product is genuine and actually to engage online if the, the internet again access is uh, available. And yes, a holography, for instance, remains preeminently uh, used today in security features in your passport, uh, in your uh, banknotes uh, in most of the country. And this is one of the most uh, recommended uh, security features. And why? Because it works. It has been established 20 years ago and it still continue to do the job and its purpose uh, it is supposed to deliver. Uh, I was, uh, uh, after to told us in, uh, in Pakistan, he was, uh, he was part of the uh, uh, customer organization. We had here very uh, much uh, feedback from customers, uh, customs officers organization uh, here in the UK, but anywhere in the world. And they're telling us, you know, even if you have your knee passport, you don't have always the gate to read the, the, the e passport. So you need to rely on physical criteria that the passport is genuine or fake to authorize the entry into your territory of citizen. So in this jungle of solution, uh, overt security labels stands uh, the test of time along other technologies. So in, in uh, uh, we, we talk about the uh, difference between authentication and trustability. And actually it's not so much a difference, but it's uh, giving clarity. What authentication uh, brings to the party, uh, what an authentication security features give is distinguishing a product which is authentic from fake. That's a basic definition. But the trustability, which is using a code to detect smuggling and diversion, this is bringing you uh, the trustability. So the uh, recording of the event along the supply chain and one is not the equivalent of the other. So uh, uh, using uh, security features and using a code can give you, again, do, and can meet those two objectives actually to provide identity uh, with the, um, with the uh, 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 code and uh, prove the, the product is genuine by the security features. So business cases now. Uh, we talk a lot about the increase of um, purchasing online. Well, uh, how do I do? Because you have uh, big, big, big players, Amazon, Alibaba, uh, uh, just to name uh, two of the, of the market leaders uh, worldwide. And if you don't act at the factory where you are manufacturing your goods, exactly what we see, uh, where Dollar is acting and collaborating with the brand to implement a security marker plus a digital code uh, at the factory, then you don't start to identify and authenticate your product. Then you don't control your overall run of production and so on and so forth. And then across the marketplace, uh, it's, 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 it's very complex and relatively complex actually to monitor through which uh, marketplace it will be sold to. But at the end of the day, if it goes to this marketplace online that you don't fully control as a brand, the uh, consumer will be in a position to authenticate the product because you've given them the right instruction, how to read, how to tell, how to understand what are the security features on it. And then eventually reports uh, based on the QR code uh, information, uh, the, 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 first of all, the, uh, the presence of the, of the good, where it has been uh, sold to and, and to whom and to see if it is legitimate or fake. Obviously, it's much more uh, easy, uh, comfortable when you know the network. Uh, I took the example here on the agri-chemistry uh, sector, uh, which is one of the verticals where we, we have a massive presence as well. It's a, something which is very interesting because uh, how the farmer in a in remote area of the world can check a product is genuine or fake from all those uh, 10, 20 uh, market leaders. And you know that insecticides, pesticides have been usually, usually counterfeit. So using a, a physical security features, useless to explain why in remote area, and having the, the, the scan QR code at distributor, the distributor you normally have identified, which are legalized, authorized uh, distributors along the supply chain to retrieve the information in your, in your, in your cloud base or database. And as a brand, you communicate 
proactively uh, to your uh, um, distribution selling network. That's uh, what has proven to work efficiently. Consumer electronics now, well, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's a market where many, many brands are fully aware uh, that the, the, there is a counterfeit challenge. Uh, uh, we, we often say that China is, is the uh, uh, production uh, of the world, the factory of the world. Uh, probably 80%, uh, I, I don't have any uh, statistics on that, but a uh, rough estimate is that 80% of the electronics component would be uh, manufactured, assembled in, uh, in China. And then how do you control as a uh, electronics uh, uh, brand leader, the production in, uh, in remote countries and making sure the distribution is flowing uh, perfectly well uh, across uh, your uh, sales territories, including right to repair circular economy, which is becoming more and more prevalent. Well, we're talking about uh, 1.5 trillion and the, uh, you see the, uh, the uh, electronics counterfeiting uh, figures, which is, uh, which is absolutely massive. So here, again, what, we, uh, what we've been successfully using for, for Microsoft, uh, as I mentioned before, is physical covert security features. We, we co-develop with the anti-piracy team and uh, with clear tamper evidence. So uh, when you're buying your laptop, from Dell or Lenovo, whoever is, is, is make, making it for you, you make sure that your Microsoft Office has been legitimately uh, downloaded to your, uh, to your PC. And then you can scan, uh, you can uh, eventually report to the brand, whether you are the uh, uh, distribution retailer or the uh, consumer. Uh, well, this is the product, it has been bought and, uh, and, and, and checking the information on the website of the brand, how I must clarify, uh, check the product is, is genuine. So <clears throat> some examples, again, of the, uh, of the verticals, of the segments we've been addressing and, and the different pro problematics we've, we've encountered. So dollar now, why? Um, well, first of all, because we are a market le leader, in dispute market leader, I should say. Uh, and sorry for not being humble uh, this time, but we have been uh, developing uh, embossed uh, holography for more than 20 years. And, and we have also in our range one, one of the unique also uh, um, volume holography, uh, we, we call it Lipman holography uh, manufacturers in, in the US. So production in the UK for the embossed holography and production in, uh, in the US for the Lipman holography, supplying every customer needs. And again, here we're talking about aesthetical uh, consumer engagement. Do I like it? Uh, can it? Can it fit to my brand identity? Yes. And using the most demanding security hologram uh, used by uh, government for polymer uh, banknotes, uh, paper banknotes, and or ID documents. So. This is, uh, this is obvious, but on top of that, we had a digital layer because we don't trust in uh, uh, physical uh, security features anymore. We've been developing, and this is why I was referring it as a, um, a startup mentality, uh, even if we have 200 years history in, uh, in uh, security uh, solution we have been developing a Trustology Gateway and Trustology Manager to enable you uh, as a brand owner to uh, properly uh, do a track and trace uh, over the uh, supply chain. So it starts with, uh, with a mobile app, right? Where you have all the uh, targeted enforcement activities, which are uh, focused here, the imagery of suspect and location, and obviously you can uh, build a trust uh, build alert uh, with your uh, network and very easy uh, to train uh, your law enforcement officers. We actually do that also for government uh, with a different scale, different uh, level of information. But for your information, this is, this is already uh, uh, live in, uh, in Middle East area where we've been implementing this, uh, this kind of uh, solution as well. So the labor manager, uh, if you remember how to fight against uh, 
a fake marketplace online purchasing, you need to act at the factory of manufacturing goods. If you don't do that, forget it. Your distribution won't be uh, uh, transparent and won't be uh, secure enough. So the label manager is enabling you to, uh, to securely produce in, in one of our uh, factory, as I said before, in the UK, in uh, the US, or even in Malta, uh, knowing that we have also some remote factory in Africa and in Asia. Uh, you can securely produce the label, the finished label, and distribute it very securely to the places, factory, where it has to be implemented. And, and, and why I'm saying the factories is because talking to a brand again recently, they told us, you know what, I've got 15 factories all across the globe to secure. How can you do that? Then you need to cope with the, the, the staff of, uh, of engineer and the project manager team able to scale it at, at the right speed for the, for the brand. Then the uh, distribution of the mobile application is online, very intuitive. Uh, you, can, uh, you can explain, of course, uh, you have a reading menu to explain how it works. And it is enabling you to, uh, for the inspectors on the field, to become part of the uh, of the of, of retrieving the information for the uh, for the brand. How do you store the information? Well, to be discussed. But what most of the brand are choosing cloud-based uh, uh, storage solution for government. Very different. They are requiring a must-have is to have a, a, a data center which is strictly controlled by the uh, local authorities. So again multiple answers to uh, retrieve the data, store them securely, and making sure that the GDPR, so that the personal data, are also protected. Uh, but then it gives you a lot of information, not only for the uh, anti-piracy team, but also for the um, uh, marketing team. So um, global, regional, uh, worldwide mapping, uh, spotting the, uh, the fake uh, products and uh, providing in a, in a very uh, single portal the dashboard, uh, the, 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 the information which is requested by, by the brand. So the brand sitting in his, uh, in his office can control not only uh, what his inspectors are doing on the field, which is, which is some, sometimes something we've been asking for, but also getting some insights, some information from their consumer and their distributors, which is uh, invaluable in terms of, uh, of pricing. And then very, uh, very new, very innovative. We are launching this in, in January 21. So you're the first in uh, uh, public to, <clears throat> to listen to that. So it is actually a, a demo you can, you, can, uh, you can look at on our website. So we have the possibility uh, with a mobile app to actually identify the uh, holography with, uh, and, and give to the holography, we are manufacturing a single DNA. So it's, it's a perfect example of combination of security features with digital, giving you the guarantee the product is genuine. And here we are talking of a um, uh, very easy uh, process, which is we recommend to be used by the uh, law, law enforcement officers because by reading the hologram, this has to be um, a, a kind of control, uh, uh, forensic, uh, covert um, uh, inspection uh, um, made by the uh, law enforcement officers. But this is to come in, in 2021. So engage with us if you want some demos, open to do it uh, live with you uh, or, uh, or um, uh, whenever you're, you're available to do that. So delivering the right solution nowadays is security features, having the right label, the right marker. I call it marker because sometimes we've been asked also to innovate some uh, direct marking technology uh, directly to the product, but also combination of security features plus unique code with the digital traceability, and we will talk to that in a minute, uh, is giving you the product authentication. And again, we are not talking about million of million of investment, okay? It's, uh, it can be for a, for a medium-sized brand, less than a, than, a, than a million investment. 
So why do we say that the code could be, uh, could, should be combined with, with the security features? Well, first of all, uh, nobody has access to, to internet, we've seen it. So you have to rely on some physical criteria which have been uh, communicated uh, through a marketing campaign uh, to uh, anti-piracy officers, how to recognize a product is genuine from fake uh, without uh, being connected. And on top of that, a QR code, a code, never forget it can be copied, it can be cloned, it can be issued. So uh, give you an, exa an example, we have one of, of the brand which have been asking us, you know, to uh, issue a security label for them. And, and what, what the, the brand, I mean, the counterfeiters were, were doing, they were uh, overlapping the existing label and repositioning a brand new label. So how can you engage with the, con the hand consumers and telling them the product is, is, is genuine or fake? If you add previously explain that they should see a security features on each packaging and, and check it by tilt, tilting it physically. This is uh, how to prevent this kind of, uh, of, um, of copy. So in, in, in conclusion, uh, our recommendation is to uh, a base uh, on, on the most demanding uh, security uh, labels. And when we say that, we uh, we often say that we are we are creating mini banknotes. We are fixing on your on your packaging on your products, so uh, uh, highly highly secured. Uh, and then we have multi layer solution for the um, uh, Trustology digital platform. And something I didn't mention is the Trustology tr track and trace. Uh, everybody is talking about track and trace without exactly explaining or understanding what it means. Always, and I would say so. Please engage with us, but we are able, and we've proven that in uh, in, in very uh, in many countries and in remote areas, we are capable to engage on your production facilities to do the uh, aggregation association of the uh, security code we are we are we are printing on on your behalf with your product code um, aggregation to uh, a bigger packaging, uh, so from uh, unique SKU to uh, uh, bigger pack, then to carton, then to pallet, then to container. And, and, and this information is absolutely valuable because this is enabling you to exactly know where you've been shipping to and to boom. And then the question of the track and trace will be, what do I really want to understand? Because uh, one, it, once it is shipped, let's say by, uh, by sea, uh, maritime container, or the goods are arriving to the, to the country, then the con customer officers, again, needs to understand and have the, uh, the ability to identify that the product is for the country which is uh, supposed to be, uh, to be sold to. But again, it's a, it's a very uh, interesting topic, but it would probably deserve another hour or half an hour at least discussion to uh, really deep dive onto this uh, discussion. And I will just finish by giving you, you know, uh, our, our footprint uh, all over the globe. This is very important for large brands. Uh, we, we are enabled to uh, give you the entire solution from A to Z. And, and we've been proving that already. Um, and don't hesitate to talk to us. And, uh, you know, thank you for, uh, for your time. Thank you, Jerome, for your informative presentation. It was indeed uh, a very informative one. I think uh, I really learned a lot from brand, on Delarue's uh, brand protection uh, solutions and authentication solutions. I think this is the second time I'm watching a uh, presentation by you, so I've had uh, a lot of information now. Thank you, Azim. It's always a pleasure to be, uh, to be part of your, of your event, virtual event. Looking forward to see you in, uh, in real life. Yep, definitely. We all are waiting for that. So I, again, I would like to encourage all the attendees to stop by uh, the link about uh, the at uh, www.hlpeb.com. The link is on the slide. And uh, moving on to our final uh, session for today before the Q&A session. So stay strong with us, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, here still until the final session. So the next session titled Ensuring Brand Protection and Integrity in Times of COVID-19 to be presented by 
uh, Shanda Gina, who is the secretary, secretary of the Authentication Solution Provider Association, ASBA, uh, since 2006 and responsible for the overall operation and building up authentication ecosystem in India. He is also the editor of the Authentication Times and advisory member at the Tech Stamp and Traceability News. Uh, thanks, Shanda, for joining us today. I think you can uh, share your screen and uh, have the stage for yourself. Hello, Shanda. Hi. Yeah. I'm audible. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. So you can share your screen now. Yeah. Give me one second. So is it? Is it? Yep. Clear. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shanda. So, uh, uh, good morning. Uh, Good afternoon and evening to all delegates. And thank you, Hajim, for uh, organizing the event on this important topic. Uh, and thank you, Jerome, on, and all my counterparts for uh, sharing the, uh, uh, the insight on this important topic, which is very close to uh, my heart. I think, Shanda, I think you need to click on the slideshow one more time. The screen became small again. Yep. Yep. Sorry. So, yeah. So the, uh, the, the subject, uh, uh, we all know that the subject is very important. And uh, in fact, Hazim, it's fine? Yep, I can yep. see you. OK, so sorry for this uh, inconvenience. Yeah. So uh, I was saying that the, all the presentations and expert comments shared by my uh, counterparts are fantastic. and. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm happy to see the gaining momentum against uh, uh, fighting the counterfeits and the illicit products, which are becoming, a, which are already a big menace uh, for the uh, entire economy to the countries and uh, at the end, the end point to the consumer. Today, uh, every sector is facing uh, the counterfeiting issues and uh, we all know that one uh, size cannot fit to all. Uh, perhaps uh, there are few, uh, strategies or uh, steps uh, which could be useful for the delegates who are attending this webinar and the conference, I'm going to address in my presentation. And uh, as already um, technology companies like HP and Laru have already uh, shared a lot of information about the uh, technology benefits, uh, about the physical authentication technologies, traceability. So my presentation will be more on as an advisory as, as a collective effort, uh, as a consumer, as a, as a uh, organization, as a brand, or in, for the regulators that how we can fight together this menace. Uh, so uh, I'm going to cover a brief intro introduction about what ASPA is, uh, counterfeiting in the times of the COVID pandemic, uh, what are the challenges amongst the brand owners, as, plus as a converter side. And what are the steps we can do uh, to ensuring the brand integrity? So a brief introduction about uh, ASPA. Uh, we are a New Delhi-based organization. Uh, Authentication Solution Provider Association is a non-profit organization. It, it was established in 1998 and with a 22 years of plus experience, uh, we have uh, currently 69 members companies which are providing physical as well as digital uh, authentication and traceability solution. And uh, we are working uh, with a vision to build up the authentication system in the country, in the India, uh, against the counterfeiting and illicit economy. In case if you want more information, so I would request all of to please visit us at www aspaglobal.com. So coming back to the, uh, the main issue, would like to share the recent incidents and statistics which are related to the counterfeiting happens uh, during the COVID pandemic. We all know that counterfeiting has become a, a trillion dollar economy in itself. In fact, time to time, uh, Interpol, once an Interpol director has termed it as a crime, it is going to be the crime of 21st century. And I think his predictions are almost on the, um, the right line, very unfortunate to say that. 
in terms of the the recent uh, uh, incident which we uh, as as per noticed so would like to share few of them uh, and all the economies and the geographies have impacted with the counterfeiting and i think covid pandemic has uh, increases uh, this uh, menace further for example if we talk about the canadian region the canadian health authority under the project called project purified have detained 380 shipments 48000 uh, which included more than 48000 of covid-19 test kits 4.5 million pp kits plus 33000 prescription tablets and this campaign was only for a period of i think between march to july if you talk about the european union and uh, there are we have uh, noted the incidents how criminals are duping started duping the authorities so in one case i would like to mention that the german authorities uh, was approached by a fake website with the uh, for the procurement of uh, um, uh, uh, covid uh, uh, face mask and in uh, they were supposed to uh, they were almost duped uh, with a scam of euro 15 million so you can understand that uh, how the counterfeitings are uh, are becoming active and they are applying all the methods whether it's a cyber attacks uh, 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 infiltration in the supply chain or uh as well as uh taking the opportunities of this uh, short supply shortages if you talk about the america in reason the home loan homeland security department identified nine more than 19000 plus suspected covid-19 related domains and uh, they have seized uh, products worth 3.2 million dollar linked to 494 shipments and uh, in the indian scenario we did a, a study uh, by uh, as per study estimated that the, in the period of between 18 to 19 there was an increase of almost 24% of uh, counterfeiting uh, incidents which are reported in india in the current in the current uh, year also uh, we have noticed that the trend is going uh, uh, similar but uh, uh, more products are uh, counterfeiting are now we are finding related to the health uh tobacco and food uh, products and not only this uh, these are uh, statistics that is never uh, told uh, tell lie and uh, we all know that interpol have also recently raised an alarm on al to almost 192 plus countries uh, uh, uh requesting them to be uh, proactive in fighting uh, counterfeiting uh, because of the covid-19 pandemic uh, which is happening so uh in in this scenario so what are the challenges which as a brand owner is facing as well as the converters so there are may, uh, may, uh, various challenges a brand is facing for example uh, we have to understand that they have to comply the export regulations there are uh, a lot of global traceability programs are happening across the globe they have to uh, face the gmp and quality regulations uh, in the domestic market they have to fulfill import regulatory requirements plus there are issues related to the product recall uh, they they are also finding the uh, challenges in terms of finding appropriate authentication technologies uh, uh, how to find uh, there is another challenge that how to find an ethical vendor even there are so many uh, label printers uh, plus companies which which uh, uh, are are into the authentication business but uh, uh, it's a challenge that how to find an ethical vendor and a vendor which can advise them a proper anti counterfeiting strategy because there there have been cases uh, happens in previous also that a brand adopt any authentication technology and uh, without uh, proper research and uh, proper guidance and end up in in the failure so it these kind of incident also lead uh, Uh, uh eroding the trust of a brand so we we are as a converter also need to understand that uh we have to not only the sell the product or the authentication technologies we have to work as a uh, brand partners with uh, the brands in uh, fighting that issues so we have to work more as a brand partners plus there are demographics and global supply chains issues which are happening 
the con there are uh, the dramatically changes are happening in the consumer and the market behavior there is a greater demand is increasing for the personalization of product uh, customer loyalty is there plus the uh, the challenge of how to connect my loyal uh, consumer uh, with the packaging so so uh, the so these are the challenges we we see uh, we see that brands and converter have to uh, find out uh, the issue find out the solution together in case for the fighting uh, counterfeiting so uh, i'm uh, now i'm going to present the uh, the steps which uh, as a regulators uh, and uh, can take to fight counterfeiting the upcoming slides will also uh, uh, in update you about the as a brand what i can do and and what I, as a consumer what i can do also so the regulator i think the most important aspects in fighting counterfeiting so as a regulator uh, uh, we urge all the regulators and authorities uh, uh, globally as well as in india to step one that, that they should do they should motivate and incentivize the legitimate manufacturers plus a uh, uh, harsh punishment should be on the illegitimate manufacturer who are producing these counterfeit goods they could also uh, uh, re uh, request or uh, mandate the brand owners to consider risk brand risk management as an important subject in in the, in the brand protection or in the brand marketing plus there is a lot of awareness is required amongst the consumer a law and in the enforcement level and with the scale of machinery uh, the uh, the regulators have they are the best one to educate uh, this i would like to mention an important uh, figures that recently uh, uh, the hungary hungarian uh, national anti counterfeiting board released a statistic that now only 11% hungarian's population are about are buying counterfeit products so they as a nation hungary also realized uh, the issue of uh, the importance of the counterfeiting issue and almost 10 years back they formed an anti counterfeiting uh, body which comprising of in fact all the industry association and uh, various enforcement bodies and start educating them as well as consumer so this 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 kind of approach is required from the uh, regulator if if you really want to eliminate uh, fakes from the uh, global economy plus uh, there is a, a, a need for the training of enforcement people because we have we have also seen that uh, many times it it is become it become difficult for even for the expert to identify a difference between genuine and fake products so uh, coming to the uh, industry and what brand what they can do uh, so i think the number, first important step is that they should consider counterfeiting as a major risk as jerome also said that uh, still uh, we are finding challenges that uh, the penetration of adoption of authentication technologies and traceability technologies amongst brand is still very low so i think we uh, but they, they they all know the uh, i think the issue is that they all are aware of these issue and and we need to uh, create more awareness among them we need to find out uh, uh, the uh, their challenges uh, the apprehensions in their mind and as an industry we have to take this step because as as you can i would like to share an important uh, uh, figure that recently uh, in an idc report uh, this is on uh, in fact this is related to the pharmaceutical product they found that 75% of the global supply chain leaders believe that covid-19 will increase problems with the drug diversions including theft and counterfeiting of critical products so step 2 for the from for the brand owners from our side is that they should invest in the authentication process uh, to secure the supply chain eradicating the tampering chances and uh, enabling the identification to the uh, consumer as well as to their dealer networks uh dealer networks they should support the government law and enforcement uh, program in educating uh, dealer network as well as the consumer 
so uh, this is uh, our advisory for the industry and brand so uh, for the consumer side i think uh, uh, as a consumer also there is some responsibility lies on us also but uh, the consumer is the one which is suffering from the uh, from the counterfeit products so in terms of the consumer uh, the strategy could be uh, for example uh, if you talk about the health uh, for the medicine and healthcare sector and uh, uh, we can uh, we can partner the health professionals uh, in plus the people at the point of sale uh, in creating more and more awareness for example uh, 9. Point, we have 9.2 million doctors available uh, across the globe plus 18. Point million nurses so why don't why don't we reach to them uh, and uh, uh, we should exp outreach expand our outreach program with uh, those professionals and uh, educate them about the counterfeiting issues and how they can uh, uh, support help the patient as well as uh, uh, the end and uh, and customer buying the product in the in the fight against counterfeiting as a consumer i think uh, yeah there's a other uh, responsibility for us also that we should buy from the genuine uh, genuine manufacturer we from the buy from the genuine resources we should always take bill uh, so uh, this is uh, so uh, we, uh, this is about how what, how aspa is aspa is doing uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, in the fight against counterfeiting so as a uh, industry body we are working on four key area on the innovation side where we are encouraging and supporting our members to adopt the new generation technologies we are finding the opportunities for our um, indian counterparts members to in, uh, for the technology transfer and strategic partnership we are uh, as a industry body we are developing new tools we have recently developed a tool called counterfeit repository where we are uh, updating all the counterfeit incidents which are happening in india and uh, uh, we started this exercise in all in 2017 and as on date i think uh, there are more than 1000 plus incidents are reported in at this you can find this at this platform which are uh, which could be very useful for the research organizations for the uh, brand owners as well as for the authentication players to understand uh, the more deep insight about the counterfeiting activity as an advocacy measures we are connecting with the industries we are connecting with the various industry forum for example the automobile uh, association the uh, association in the agrochemical and educating them about the counterfeiting issue and uh, the awareness uh, also we as a, uh, from our side we had uh, created three program called make sure india the brand protection awareness program as well as the authentication forum where uh, in uh, in subsequently we are we are educating the uh, media uh, very important pillar uh, for uh, raising the awareness plus the brand owners and the packaging guys as well as the entire stakeholders and regulators regulator so uh, with this i would like to conclude uh, with with the thought uh, with the with the uh, with the key uh, point that fighting counterfeiting i think is a uh, it's not only a brand issue and uh, there is a responsibility uh, it is a responsibility of everyone and if we all together work and it managed well we will result that uh, in consumer getting right products at the right prices uh, manufacturers uh, gaining higher market share increase in brand values and profit uh, the regulators receiving uh, the increased revenue which can be uh, used for the betterment of society and of course uh, they, uh, they can uh, uh, one channel of uh, terrorism funding ter terrorism will also be drive and with this i would like to conclude and thank you all the delegates and in case if you have any any queries or you would like to partners please please uh, feel free to connect with us we will be happy to help thank you shanda for your informative presentation and sharing with us uh, the effective ways to ensure brand protection integrity and the measures that should be taken to ensure that our products is uh, uh, is secured as well as how uh, 
awareness is a really important factor in ensuring that consumers are aware of the counterfeit goods in the market and also that collaboration between stakeholders is a key to uh, combating illicit trade. Uh, I think I can share back my screen. So uh, now we are moving to the Q&A session, which I think is everyone's favorite. So I think uh, now we can all actually, all participants can actually unmute your mic and turn on your camera. Uh, if you have any question, you can uh, ask uh, to the speaker yeah, just out loud. Outside. Yep. So if, if anyone have a question, you can just unmute your mic and straight away ask and the speakers would respond to you. So do we have any questions? I, th uh, I think I have a question for uh, Bo from Verify Me. Bo, are you here? Right. I think Bo having, is having a bad internet connection. Yes, I'm here. So Hello, Bo, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you now, Hazim. Yeah, Paul. So uh, I, uh, I just we received a question with regards to Rainbow Secure Inc. So uh, we all actually right. wanted to: uh, Does the Rainbow Secure work on all HP Indigo Press? Okay, so great question. Um, the six thousand and seven thousand are categorized as Series Three presses, and it works perfectly on those. It's a seamless transition, usually on um, station ink station number seven and it just the ink cartridge slots straight in it's called 523 security ink that's our rainbow secure ink so it's just perfect there is a little bit of technical development work needs to be done on the 20,000 and 30,000 which are the I think they call them the series four presses um, but we just need to take a case study to HP in order to facilitate that um, that development work so it, it is a bit of tweaking that needs doing and we will fund it with a with a case study that we can do so if there was a, a PSP or a brand that was using uh, uh, 20,000 or 30,000 presses we would undertake that development work with you to to do that case study and get it working on a 20,000 or 30,000 press so I hope that All answers right. the question yeah, Thanks. so uh, actually, uh, is it necessary to have an HP and Digo press to uh, use the Rainbow Secure Ink? Okay, well, that's, if you like, that's the perfect scenario where, you know, your brand, it, it, where you can just get it on the on the HP and Digo, a single pass, and that's perfect. But, you know, we, we're coming across many brands that maybe want something on a cap and they're using aluminium caps and print on aluminium substrates. Well, you know, and they, and they can't get, variable variable codes on that but they might make do with a static mark so they can just use the beeper to authenticate in which case we can create that ink for them we create the rainbow secure invisible ink that would go on let's say a cap or a box or a package or a, a parcel or anything like that or um, we can create a spot color so if you've got a logo on a on a on a label and it's 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 a blue well we could create that blue with our pigment and you could lay it down on a traditional flexo press if you wanted and and so you could still get that authentication and, and use that beeper to to verify that that's your product you wouldn't get the data and the variable data that you get with the invisible codes that you can lay down on a, on a digital press like the indigo but you could still have some measure of authentication protection yeah Yep, uh, and uh, uh, for our last question, uh, is the ink and the track and trace system available in the Asia Pacific region for companies based in Asia? Sure, we're, we're global. We have uh, partners and uh, secure distribution for both the track and trace and the uh, rainbow secure ink. So um, out, of, out of the US for the North America and the Europe, and then out of, uh, we have a uh, distribution outlet uh, secure distribution outlet for APJ and EMEA as well. So it's uh, available globally and at short notice. It's a, it, you know, from implementation is, is literally, let's say, days and maybe a week or so uh, rather than months. Yeah. All right. Thank great. You. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for the question. Cheers. Thanks. All right. So uh, if Please. anyone have a question, yep. Let's make, make, an, make a question. Yes, sure. Um, I want to know which considers 
are the best security element that can be verified with naked eyes. It means level one. And which ones consider uh, in level two? Please. All right, I think uh, Dennis from HP can take this question as well as uh, Jerome from Delarue. Yep, Dennis. Yeah. Uh, hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. So uh, if I understand the questions correctly, you're asking whether uh, on the security layer, on the covert layer, so that there's a... So what, what I show today, uh, I show four layers. So from overt, semi-covert, covert, and forensic. Yeah. Uh, on, on our experience, uh, most of the brand were always uh, willing to start with very cheap uh, brand protection solution from the overt uh, level. Uh, and then eventually when they have a lot of damages to their reputations and their, their revenue, they, they started to look into more expensive brand protection solutions where uh, covert technology comes in and also track and trace for their supply chain and more. Uh, so different level, uh, different layer requirement is there, uh, depending of uh, your brand's requirement. So I'm not sure if you are a brand that is asking these questions or you are on the printer side that is asking these questions. Uh, but we can definitely go into more details of your requirement. Uh, as we say, we, we have a lot of brands that come to our customer that is a printers that requesting for them to be able to have a label and packaging that is a combination of uh, level uh, from a very uh, overt layer to the covert layer. So they have combination of different brand protection features in order to uh, uh, protect their products. So that, that is what I have. Thanks. Thank you, Dennis. And I think, uh, Jerome, are you still with us? I'm with you, Azim. Yeah. yeah. So I think uh, one of the questions that is always asked is how do you encourage the consumer to actually scan the QR code and the authentication code and how can the, what kind of incentives do you provide to consumers as a brand? Yeah, so <clears throat> you, uh, you can uh, proactively communicate. So uh, I mentioned uh, Microsoft uh, as an example in my presentation, but you can look at Brother website as well uh, for in cartridge. So you have a, you have several ways to talk to your to your customer. Uh, you can talk to them by printing on the packaging. You can talk to them by having the information available on the website of your brand, and you can educate. If this has to be, and I would like also to answer the the question that has been raised before, if it is a covert only uh, or forensic even. Uh, then you can have also some specific information which is only revealed to uh, uh, law enforcement officers, uh, anti-piracy team, uh, some of your uh, selective distribution network, and so on and so forth. And, and just to answer your, the, the first question, so we, we talk a, a lot, or we, um, how can I say that? We, we always uh, put the uh, digital against the uh, physical, but it's, 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 it's a combined approach. So the physical can be uh, uh, in ink, but it can be in holography, as I said, and holography is definitely one of the uh, uh, most visible three-dimensional uh, uh, with uh, visible with naked eyes and, and, and with vibrant colors, with uh, three-dimensional effects. In terms of cost, okay, you will, you will go into a different category, but you have some products that deserve it. Uh, we, we talk about agri-chem industry, we talk about uh, uh, wine and spirit, we talk about electronics, you know, there are a lot of products where the, uh, the value per SKU is uh, probably around uh, above uh, 20 uh, US dollar or, and then it justified. The, the price of a hologram, uh, and, and, and again, I won't give this as a, as granted or, a, a, but it's, we're talking about a couple of cents Per uh, product, okay. So it's not. Uh, uh, we are not talking about a, a, a very uh, a large investment. So, so just to answer your question, uh, overt uh, holography, uh, visible uh, ink, uh, which different effects, and uh, covert. Uh, if you want to reveal to your uh, to your uh, consumer, you need to properly educate them. 
And, and one of the best example I have, or I know is, is, is really a Microsoft website. I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, inviting the attendees to, um, to browse on, on Microsoft website, how to tell and how they are educating their, their consumer. We are, uh, we are all of us, uh, even if, um, if, except if we're working with Apple, of course, but uh, yeah, have a look uh, on, on, on how they communicate to their uh, consumer. But again, we can share that in, in, in private uh, some best practices we, we've seen from, uh, from uh, some of our brand consumers, customers. All right, thank you. Thank you, uh, Jerome, for your input. I think uh, we have a poll also that we could share with the attendees. I think it should appear on your screens right now. Can you see it? So uh, it, it's a poll that we are uh, we're generating data for one of the research that we are actually doing right now on the factors that drive consumers to purchase counterfeits. So uh, you can, it's a multiple choice, so you can choose more than one answer. So I uh, will give it a minute for the participants just to vote. All right, 10 seconds left. Okay, so I'm sharing the results. I hope everyone can see the results on your screen. So uh, I think majority of the participants have agreed that price is one of the main factors that drive consumers to purchase a counterfeit product. Uh, uh, personal gratification came in the second place, associated risk and brand loyalty almost uh, the same. Uh, peer pressure is the latest. Uh, we are currently undergoing uh, uh, research in Malaysia to understand the factors that drive the consumer to purchase a counterfeit good. Uh, we're not specified to a specific industry so uh, one of the most answered uh, factor in the survey was price by the consumers. They are driven by the price to purchase uh, a counterfeit and mainly when it comes to luxury goods, when it comes to pharmaceutical associated risk is very high. So they wouldn't buy a counterfeit uh, pharmaceutical good. Uh, personal gratification also plays an important role because uh, fitting in in a specific uh, level of income through buying a specific uh, luxury good is also uh, something that the consumer look for. So uh, I would like to thank you all for sharing uh, your feedback on this poll. And if there's any further questions, again, you can unmute and please uh, ask directly to us. Hi, Azam. Um, is it possible to ask a question? Yes, Mark, please. Hi, thank you. So um, great set of presentations. Um, excellent from everybody. One question, though, that kind of springs to mind is we talked about securing everybody else's supply chain in terms of track and trace and all the features that can be used to do that, to authenticate. But what are, what are the organizations doing that supplying these, these goods? So for example, you look at Packard, do you um, secure your own supply chain? Do you adopt any standards? Do you work to any standards? Because when you're making security print features and security devices, um, there are ISO standards around to help protect um, not only the brand at the end, but also your own supply chain so that you're adopting you know, the highest standards you can to protect your customers um, from, um, from fraud, but equally so that you're not bringing in materials that um, you know, of questionable provenance. So you know, really, are, you know, HP, are you adopting standards? Or are you using sort of like the, the ISO standards for, for, for you when you make these security print labels, et cetera? I think, Dennis, you can take this question. Yeah, interesting. I have to say, uh, when I was uh, listening to the event today, uh, I'm kind of expecting some questions similar to what uh, has been asked now <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, I'm, I'm from the HP Indigo team. Uh, HP is pretty big. So we have actually uh, now, if you understand how HP works now, you, you just now mentioned you were packed. We, we, I'm from the HPI group. So, so Hewlett Packard has been break into two business now. 
uh, one is HPE and one, one is HPI. So I'm from the I group, yeah. So the HPI that where I come from, they are predominantly have uh, probably five business unit and um, PC, personal printers, personal laptops, and uh, HP Indigo for the industrial. And currently we are called PI PIB team. So uh, in, in how how can we uh, help uh, our PC and uh, personal printers and personal laptop uh, on this whole? Uh, counterfeiting problem um, on that part is pretty not the biggest one. The biggest one that we have or we, we face is the ink part. So on the personal printers, we have these uh, uh, ink cartridges that uh, can be counterfeit, can be diverted. Uh, so this is something that is under our supply team uh, on the personal printers uh, business unit that they are working on. Uh, they are currently, from my understanding, they uh, do apply uh, try and trace solutions into all the uh, ink cartridges. So if you go into any uh, electronic store to buy ink cartridges, you probably found that they have a special uh, secure QR uh, that is on there. Uh, and previously, this is all uh, developed by our own HP company. Uh, we, we also uh, sell that uh, to the market. Uh, but just because of the, the, the platform's uh, continuations last year, we decided to discontinue that for a third-party company to use them. So currently, it's solely inside a HP uh, a company. So currently, they are using this technology for their own for now. Uh, but eventually, uh, what is the development going forward? Uh, I'm not uh, under the supply team, so I, I never got involved in that part. So um, I can only talk about what my customer or uh, the, the printers brands is all working on. Uh, we, we do a lot of these our projects uh, throughout the whole Asia pack or even throughout the whole world. Uh, we have company uh, with uh, uh, dry food that is printed on pouches that require this type of features to protect their products uh, in Asia pack. Uh, so we, we, we come up with all these uh, HP Indigo secure features. Uh, as, you, as you know, uh, one, fun, one, one features is not good enough to protect the products. So we have to combine a lot of them and we have to make them all accessible using our HP technology to actually print them in one press, in you know, one press, uh, just to make the whole uh, printing uh, easier. Uh, and uh, of course, this also uh, helps the sustainability go for every brand that is looking forward into the future. So uh, I, I hope I answer your questions. But uh, again, I, I don't have a lot of information on that part of the supply chain requirement on our HP side. Thanks. No, thank, thank you very much, Dennis. Very good. Thank you. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, I, I hope we still have got some more questions. If anyone would like to ask any question, just please unmute and uh, ask the question to the speaker. If not, I think we have a final uh, poll that we can uh, share. Just a second. All right. So it's just a feedback poll for our team to understand whether uh, the sessions presented today were informative and up to the standards uh, for the attendees. All right, great. All right, I think that's awesome. The results are fantastic. Thanks everyone for attending today. Uh, if do if we have any more questions, please uh, unmute and ask. All right, I think we are done with the questions. So I think we have reached an end if there's no more questions. All right, I think that's uh, the end for day one for the virtual high security printing and brand protection conference and exhibition. Again, I would like to thank everyone who stayed uh, this far and for being uh, very interactive and definitely thanks for the speakers for sharing the informative presentations and sessions for today. Thanks to our sponsors, uh, Verify Me, HP Indigo, Delarue for day one. I uh, highly appreciate your input on today's event. It was uh, a fantastic event with uh, a really informative sessions, I believe. All right, so I think we can uh, go to my favorite part, which is the group picture, since we are unable to have a group picture in events, so we can have a virtual screenshot. So if everyone can uh, open the cameras and then we can have a virtual screenshot all together. Very nice.
<laughs> All right, Jerome is already with the Christmas vibes. All right. Okay, looking fantastic. I will in three, two, one, say cheers or say Christmas. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thanks everyone for joining. And uh, we hope to see you tomorrow as well on day two, same timing, 4 to 8 p.m. Malaysia time. We'll be there. Thank you, Azim. Thank you, everyone, thank for you your have time. Them. Have thank a good you, day. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night. Oh, I, I, it's good night here in Malaysia. So. <laughs> Very late in Melbourne. See you guys all. <laughs> Take care. Bye. All right. Awesome.